Well, good morning and welcome to Thailand. This is Chang International Circuit at Buriram, and this is about as far northeast in Thailand as you can get. We're close to the Cambodian border. We're 400 kilometers from Bangkok, and this is an area with Khmer temples around it. Buriram means the city of happiness, the city of sport. And Chris Parsons, we've got both here this afternoon. Absolutely. We should have a fabulous race. Lots of cars, lots of different uh, drivers from all, almost all countries all over the world. And uh, yes, and two different classes with multiple uh, manufacturers uh, in this race. And of course, a huge tyre battle that goes on here, unlike any other GT championship in the world. This is Super GT. This is Japan's top formula, even above Formula, uh, Super Formula, what was Formula Nippon? But look at that, air temperature 32, tra track temperature 48. But that humidity, Chris, that's what we got to look at, 64%. There is a forecast of thunderstorms and rain and showers at some point during the race. Yes, it is the rainy season, so uh, as we know, that we will probably get a shower at some point. Right, here is probably the happiest man in Japan at the moment, Le Mans two times winner, Kaz Nakajima. And uh, Kaz, of course, really on a high at this time. He will be starting here this afternoon, and uh, Kaz really, really on top of his form at the moment, driving for Lexus. So it's the sixth year that Super GT has been here. The circuit opened in 2014 and it came here with Super GT. It's also had the Japanese, the, sorry, the World Moto GP, also World Super Bikes. And just three weeks ago, we had Blanc Pan Asian Series racing here. Here's the starting grid then. Let's quickly go through it. So that's Kaz Oshima starting the Wacko's Lexus there from pole position with Lexus alongside Yuji Kenimoto. It's Fred Makaviki fresh from second place at Le Mans on row two with Kaz Nakajima also coming here from Le Mans. Rio Hiraka for Lexus, Jan Mardenbra for Nissan alongside him. And then as we go down to row four, there we have the uh, Yamamoto Nojiri. We have James Rossiter starting in that number 12 car, sorry, the number nine car, the CalSonic Nissan input, and Ronnie Kinterella alongside him. Jensen Button's currently on row four, being started by Yamamoto. There's more familiar names, Heidi Kovalainen, as Chris mentioned earlier, Formula One drivers here, among many others. Bertram Baguette from Belgium, Hido Muto there. He's starting alongside Tadasuki Makino and then Yuji Tachikawa. And that completes the top 15, the GT500s, Chris, of course, starting separately from the GT300s. Yes, we ought to explain this, Mark, uh, here as we go into the 300 starting grid. Yeah, so Kimiya Sato there, that car, 10th in the championship, Sasha Fenestraz alongside him. Uh, then we have uh, Juan Paulo de Oliveira, Hiroboki Yasuda, that's uh, Aston Martin and Nissan. Honda and Mercedes on row three, Shinichi Takakagi, Haruka Kodasara, and then another famous name, Kazuki Hoshino for Nissan on row four. He is son of Kazuyoshi Hoshino, the fastest man in Japan from Group C days. Um, Richard Lyons from Belfast, Marchi Lee from Singapore together on row five. And then as we go down through Rio Mishigima, Hiroki Yoshimoto, and it's a big, big grid, but look at the different cars, Chris. Subaru, Lamborghini, Porsche, Mercedes, Aston Martin. A yep. lot, lot of these are GT3 cars. There's a, a big mixture. In uh, GT500, uh, there are only the three big Japanese manufacturers, Lexus, Nissan, and Honda. Uh, they have quite a few cars each, but in the 300 grid, there, there are a mixture of uh, Japanese, uh, chassis cars and GT3 cars. The GT3 cars, which you see so many times, uh, they can race in this sort of racing. Yeah, they are run actually running to Blanc Pan regulations, the GT3 cars here, which is overseen by the Stefan Rattel organization. Who else? So let's have a look back at what happened at Super GT over the years. 2014, it was Lexus, Nakajima and Rossiter. 2015, it was Nissan. In 2016, Lexus. 2017, Lexus. 2018, Last year, it was Kovalainen and Kobayashi together for Lexus. Well, here's the current standings, and the points are so, so close. They make, make sure this happens, Chris, by balancing out everything. We've got balance of performance, and there's a lot of weight penalties, point 
awarded for points. And fuel penalties, and Mark, as well, well. The first time that's been enacted this weekend, and that is for the championship leading Zensarumo car. So as well as 53 kilos of weight, they got to carry what's called level one fuel restriction, 95 kilograms an hour, reduced down to, to 91. 91, yes, yeah, so, so that really handicaps yeah, no, It is quite a clever handicap system, yeah. Mark, because every point you get in the championship, you carry a weight penalty. And if you carry too many weight penalties, you get a, penal a, a, a fuel penalty as well. Yep. So it is very clever. And we, we saw this coming into effect at Le Mans this year, didn't we, with uh, the balance, trying to balance out hybrids with LMP1 cars. But they've worked it very effectively. And the, the end result, Chris, this is only race four, but only one and a half points cover Lexus, Nissan and Honda. So that's exactly what they want. Honda has never won here. You might have noticed that as I was going through the list. Although cars. although Jensen Button in the Honda did win the championship last year. Yeah, yes, but obviously Honda haven't still haven't quite got their act together with the new N the new NSX, which is it's a, a Evo of last year's car. Jensen will be going all out for that win today, not only to revive his championship defence, but also to give them a win in Thailand. They want to sell cars to these spectators. Big market, yeah. big market, big Southeast big market. Asia. Yeah, let's just talk about that for a moment because we have been here before to Asia, haven't we? Formula One, we've been to the Bud circuit in India, we've been to Yongan circuit in Korea, we've been, if we can call it Asia, Istanbul, Turkey. But all those races lasted, what, three, four years? They're all Hill, Herman Tilke design circuits. They're all Bernie's wet dreams, weren't they? And they, and they really. They, they didn't. They, they, they didn't work. There's no. Yeah, they fulfilled a purpose just to put that country on the map. But once they were there, nobody wanted them. So we're going to the national anthem now, and uh, then the start of the race. So big crowd here. Possibly the last time we're going to see it here. So the Thai anthem started us off. We finished with the Imperial Japanese anthem. I'm Mark Cole and with me, Chris Parsons from Motorsport TV. And that Japanese anthem, Chris, of course, still ringing in our ears from uh, just a couple of weeks ago at Le Mans. Yes, that, uh, that little circuit in uh, Western France, Mark. <laughs> yes. So three minutes to go then, and we are ready for what's going to be a 300 kilometer race. It's going to last about two hours, uh, give or take, and you know, it depends on how many course, uh, safety cars you might have. It might even be a red flag, you never know. And then, of course, the, the big, big uh, question mark, are we going to get some rain at some point? This is the rainy season in Thailand. S sunshine at the moment, but uh, and very hot and humid. So uh, wait and see, Mark. Yeah, it's an interesting period in the Super GT. Now we've gone into this, what they call the midsummer races, three races which all run in incredibly hot and humid conditions. And when they go back to, Suzu uh, to Suzuka, that normally tends to be the hottest race of the year with the Suzuka 1000 kilometers, which this year isn't part of the championship. 
So here we go, 39 cars on the grid then. I mean, a lot of race series would give their right arms to have this, this much support, but it's the manufacturer support that really counts, not just in GT500, which is a manufacturer-driven championship, but also in GT300, which is supposedly a pro-am championship, but people like Toyota, people like Lamborghini, Mercedes, Porsche, Aston Martin, they are all piling the dollars in. They all want to be there because it's such a, such a big market. So here we go. Yeah, this is all part of the showmanship of Super GT, and it really, really works, doesn't it? So this is uh, Sudapol Uitinutu, who is from Chang Beers, circuit known as Buriram International Circuit at the FI in Paris, because, of course, the FI being French-based can't use the word Chang, being an alcohol a beverage in their name. And so Chang so have, have the naming rights <laughs> for the circuit. Yeah. So... So as far as we're concerned, we are in Thailand. This is Ch Chang International Circuit. We're about to start round four of the Super GT here in Buriram, Thailand. And this is, Chris, as we mentioned, possibly the last year we're going to see this because next year it's returning to Sipang in Malaysia for the first ever night race. Another Herman Tilke circuit. Another Herman Tilke circuit. But uh, obviously there's been question marks over Malaysia. Is it going to survive as a Formula One circuit? Not at the moment, but... No. Uh, but the, but uh, the rumour is that uh, Formula One may go back there, Mark. Yeah, well, Super GT went there for the first 13 years, 20, 2000 right through to 2013, went away, and it's coming back. So as you say, the same could happen in Formula One. So engines getting warmed up, 650 horsepower from these twin turbocharged cars. And uh, really, really, these are the absolute top. And the green flag. GT, yeah. Just two-litre cars, two-litre twin-turbo, four-cylinder. You've got no curves. You've got a big downforce reduction since 2017. They took 25% of the downforce off these cars. They have a weight ballast, as you hear, up to a maximum of 60 kilos. There's fuel flow restrictions. And that weight handicap really, really working at the moment, although it's hurting big time, isn't it, for our championship leaders. Yes. That car is carrying 53 kilos of extra weight. Next... Uh, Lexus and Nissan are both front-engined. Honda is a is a mid-engine car. Yep, and we've got other mid-engine cars, of course, in the race. The Porsches, the Lamborghinis, the Toyotas. Although we've got front-engine cars like Aston Martin. So there's something for everyone here. So sit back, enjoy your breakfast if you're in the UK, enjoy whatever time of day it is elsewhere, and you're going to have two hours of absolutely fabulous racing on this uh, four-and-a-half-kilometre circuit. Opened in 2014, as we mentioned. That's turn turn number three. The start of the circuit is is very fast. Yeah. Uh, then it turns after turn five. It becomes a very technical circuit. The drivers love it, Mark. Yeah, they do. It's a quite a short run up to turn one, though. And this has been an accident hotspot over the years. You've then got that long back stretch, which has got a slight kink in it. They call it turn two, but it's hardly noticeable. And then this incredibly tight hairpin where you're piling down there. At, you know, close to 185 miles an hour in these GT500 cars. You return then on, as, again, top speeds. And then you go into the very technical part of the circuit. Now, we've done Blanc Pan races from here, and I have to say, I get lost occasionally. It's a lack of, <laughs> it's a lack of landmarks, isn't it? You know, we are at Spa or Le Mans, even Silverstone, but, but here, you get totally lost on the track. It is absolutely flat, yes. Yep, a, so a, a typical Tilka circuit. Yeah, so this is turns five and six. We're looking down at as they're coming through. That's onto seven and that little technical section. So the car's being led by the safety car as we get ready to go racing. This race, of course, one of eight on the series this year. Okayama, Fuji, Suzuka we've already had. This is Buriram. We then go back to Fuji. We go to Autopolis. We go to Sugo. And then we go to Twin Ring, Mategi right at the end of the year. No longer twin ring Mategi, of course, because after the uh, big Japanese earthquakes 10 years ago, the actual bank circuit broke up, so they've never been able to use the IndyCar part of it since. <laughs> so we'll just call it Mategi for now. So, Zent Lexus leading the championship from Motul Nissan, from Tom's Lexus, from Arta Honda, and it's Honda who are on the back foot at the moment. They did win the first race at Okayama, but it's not looked good since then, and they have never, ever won here at Buriram. No, and uh, wouldn't they like to? Uh, but we will see. Uh, if it rains, anything could happen, Mark. Yeah, that's always the great uh, 
challenge, isn't it? The rain, it changes everything, throws all your tactics out the window, it changes your driving styles, it makes everything really, really different. As the pace right, car, pace car, car then, yeah. pulls off. These guys are really, really disciplined, Chris. They know exactly what they're doing. They wait until the lights are there. They should be side by side. In fact, here we come. The red lights are on. We are about to go racing. We are green and straight into the lead goes our pole position car. Kazushima having a great, great start there. Here's the GT500 group. The GT300 30 seconds back. That's fine for the start. The problem is in about eight or nine laps time, these guys will be plowing into the back of the GT3. Yeah, well, these guys have got 650 brake horsepower. The GT3s have got around about 500. So these are a lot quicker. Here are the GT300 cars. That little hoppy Toyota. I love that hoppy. I mean, how <laughs> Japanese is that? Toyota Champ 86. Yeah. Down they come and uh, nice tidy lines there. Everyone being very, very circumspect this early in the race. And Two hours to go. You don't try and win it in the first corner. Yeah, that looks like the Aston Martin in second place. Mark. Yeah, yeah. He's ah, in first place third. now. Yeah, what a great move there. Yes, very good. Wow, he got the pedal to the metal, didn't he? Yeah. So let's just check on the GT500 up ahead. It's Ashima, Kunimoto, Yakajima. It's then Jan Mardenborough for Condo Racing, the flying Welshman. It's Fred Makovicki, fresh from his second place for Porsche at Le Mans. And then it's James Rossiter, the man from Oxford, son of Jeremy Rossiter, used to race Formula Ford 2000. In GT300, Kim Sato in that uh, Suichuya engine car from Sasha Fenestres. And then Juan, uh, Juan Paulo Lima de Oliveira. God, that's, that's a mouthful, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I stand corrected. Actually, the Aston is in third place. Third now. The, yeah, yep. the Aston's the green one, I think, Rob. Yeah. So that, that is the Condo Racing Nissan that's gone through into second place, isn't it? That's uh, into, into first place, rather, I should say. And we saw yeah. that uh, one of the Lamborghinis has uh, took a very wide line and almost went off at the, uh, at the hairpin. So 66 laps of racing ahead. We've completed the first lap in GT500, and the order is still a Shima Kunimoto Nakajima. So that's... Uh, Looking very, very good for Lexus at the moment. Look at the massive speed they're carrying here, Chris. I mean, these cars are blindingly quick. And the big thing next year, of course, uh, they will be racing as Class A cars together with DTM in selective races. There's going to be two exhibition races this year, but they've almost got the balance right now between DTM and Super GT. This has been coming for some years, and, and it's, it's work in progress, but... Uh, this championship and the, and the German DTM are, you know, as you say, they're merging into one. Yeah, um, only, only for selected races, of course. I mean, DTM's big problem is that while Super GT are getting more and more manufacturers coming in, DTM's going down. Mercedes have said, that's it. We've been there right from the start. We went through the first DTM. We went through the second lot of series of DTM. But enough is enough at the moment. Yes, well, they've... they've uh, Plowing all their all their money into Formula One, Mark. Yeah, where's that getting? Them? <laughs> <laughs> of course, there is another event on um, somewhere in the middle of Europe here today, Austria. And, uh, that's going to be an interesting race with the grid really, really mixed up. Lewis Hamilton in Mercedes getting a penalty, and uh, he's going to be starting from very, very unaccustomed uh, fourth place. So, anyway, let's get back to the real racing. Here we are. Super GT at its best. Lovely lead battle here between Ashima and Kunimoto. It's uh, to Lexi slugging it out round here. Ram Buriram. Just to remind you, 650 horsepower from these two-litre twin turbo cars. Two-wheel drive. Rear-wheel drive on all the cars here. And a mixture, as we can see, between the Lexus that's leading. Um, yeah. And Lexus second. Yeah. Of course, the difference between our first and second cars. Um, Oshima's on Bridgestone, Kunimoto on a Yamaha, also known as Advan in Japan. And uh, they're not getting away, are they? Those those front two cars. We've got the Nissan of uh, Fred Makovicki still hanging on to their coattails. In fact, having said that, Kaz Nakajima has moved up. I'm just, I take that back. He has just moved up two places. As I said that gone ahead of the two Europeans, Jan Mardenborough and Fred Makovicki. In fact, Fred Makovicki has dropped back behind uh, Jan Mardenborough now. So 
there is a changer. Kaz Nagajima, this year's Le Mans winner, and last year's Le Mans winner, mustn't forget that. First ever Japanese FIA yeah. world champion. And, and as you said, Mark, double Le Mans winner. Yeah. So he's certainly on a flyer at the moment. And Kaz getting lined up now. He's hooked right into the back of Kunimoto. What can he do about that? It's all three cars are Lexi. Nakajima really got the bit between his teeth, hasn't he? It's our, our viewers should should note. I mean, all these drivers are Formula One type drivers. Uh, you know, professional drivers. Yep. Quite, quite a few ex Formula One drivers, not just uh, Jensen Button, but uh, uh, Hickey, Kevin and and other drivers in this race. Formula One. Yeah. One, of course, who isn't a Formula One driver, but made his. Uh, Named by racing Formula One simulators, Jan Martinbrook. The, uh, of course, he, he was the 2011 Sony Academy winner, PlayStation Academy winner, 27 years old, born in Darlington but lives in South Wales. And uh, he has done all his racing over the last four years in Super GT with Nissan. They absolutely love Jan here. So in in uh, GT 300, we see uh, we see one car getting right away it's the condo racing yeah he's gone ahead isn't he? he's gone ahead of the uh, hoppy toyota and that condo car started where uh the 56 car yeah that, that's the that's the condo nissan that started in second place there's been a change of position there and in third place i think as well no it's still the aston martin in third place the juan paulo de Oliveira, the brazilian driver but the man on the move, really, at the moment, Chris, is uh, Nakaji. Let's just wait and see what he does. A lot of this, of course, is going to be about uh, managing your tyres. We've got an hour of hard racing, and we know what the track temperature is at the moment. We saw it, 44 Celsius on the tarmac. And, the, and we are told that the Yokohama tyres uh, are better on this circuit. So uh, we'll, we will keep you updated on on that at the moment at the moment it's Bridgestone Yokohama Bridgestone Yokohama Michelin yeah you've got to go right down to 14th place for the first the one and only Dunlop runner here in GT 500 but we have several Dunlop runners in GT 300 and one of those cars that gain a Nissan which is at the moment in I think fourth place Yasuda let's check that yeah that's right fourth place so not a lot happening at the moment, Chris. I think they're just getting the feel for everything, aren't they? Settling down into a pattern because strategy comes into this a lot. You've got to manage your tyres, as we said. You've got to manage fuel. You've got to hand the car over to your co-driver in the way that you'd like, like to have it handed to you. It's quite a long race. It's a, it's a two-hour race. So we, we're expecting pit stops. Well, they have to be around the hour mark, which yep. is all they've got, all they've got fuel for. There is refueling, fresh tyres, fresh driver yeah well what we saw in suzuka we had we had a couple of uh, safety car periods at suzuka and we heike kovalainen was one of them he stopped after i think 30 minutes and handed the car over to his co-driver knowing that they could perhaps get a good lead and get away with a splash and dash towards the end the, the strategy didn't work in the end because there were further safety car periods but that that's an example of how you can try and you know play the strategy yes with a 300-kilometre uh, race, you know, you could, it, is, it is strategy. Yeah. I mean, Chris, back in the days when you were running the uh, World Sports Car Championship, you know, you've gone to 360-kilometre races for some of the, the rounds, make them more like sprint races. So this isn't far short of that. No. Is that a yellow? It's a, it's a very good format. Right, here we go. Here's the 500s, then, as we said, carving through. We're only on lap seven of 66, and already this is, this is what the crowd love. They've got to thread the needle, these big GT500s through the slower GT3 cars. And, uh, look at that, headlights flashing. Oshima is a man on a mission, and that's going to give uh, Nakajima a chance. He's moved into second place now. Nakajima jumped Kunimoto as they came onto the back stretch. And uh, Nakajima then, Le Mans winner, now into second place. Now, can he play the traffic like he played it at Le Mans? Here we go, here the two of them. Wow. Of course, this is sports car racing. Is yeah. overtaking the slower cars. Which yeah, we have we have overtaking sports cars. That's all you have to say. 
perhaps the Formula One would like to come here and have a look and see how they do it. But anyway, Nakajima there in that uh, orange and white Tom's car, that's Toyota Motorsport, Tom's Lexus, and he's right on the tail of Hashima. I don't think Hashima's going to be able to resist him, Chris. No, but it, it is how they get the brake. Yeah, that Honda getting in the way then, that's one of the GT300 cars as they swoop down through turn four. Yes, and Nakajima being held up there yep. slightly, but won't take him. Well, then it, but then again, uh, Ashima got held, temporarily blocked there by that Honda again. But they, that Honda splitting them at the, as they come through to complete lap seven, turn nine, ten, and across the start finish line. Wow, this is great racing. And Kunimoto has caught, us, caught them as well yep. in, in the third Lexus. Yes, yeah, so behind that, we've got uh, three. European drivers, Jan Mardenborough from Wales, Fred Makovicki from France, James Rossiter from the UK. But look at that, Nakajima going round then. He's done it, he's pulled it off. Can he hold it? No, he's trying to go the long way round through turn three. This is the hairpin at the far eastern side of the circuit. Now they've got a really, really long run up to turn four. Can he get the toe and perhaps do a dive bomb on the inside of turn four? Nakajima's loving this, he does. He goes on the inside, but he has to back out of it. Oh, yeah. with, with the other uh, Lexus, just keeping station behind, and they're going to get caught behind that. Yeah, this will affect their lap times, of course, as they get caught up with the traffic. You'll just see the lap times start to fall off a little bit, but once they get clear, back again. But Nakajima, I mean, he's, he's trying dive bombs at every corner now, isn't he? <laughs> One of the Mercedes there, GT3 Mercedes, you'll be familiar with if you watch Blanc Pan Racing. And uh, Kunimoto then. In that number, right on car. Nakajima's tail. Yeah, so he he fell asleep early in the race, but he's now woken up in that wet sport Lexus. And those three cars breaking away again now. Now they're past the uh, tail mark, tail enders of the GT300 field. So Nakajima just uh, having a quick respite, thinking, and yeah, Nardmura is. Uh, is yeah. is now on the tail, so we've got a, a trail of four cars. Yeah, three Nissans and a Ni th three t Lexus and a, a <laughs> Nissan. Fastest uh, man on that last lap was Nakajima, not surprisingly. And here he is again, having a look. Going to go and have a go again. This is on lap nine now of 66. As they going pass the, the Aston, Aston Martin, Martin yeah. in that's the third place car. Yep. So they've almost lapped the entire GT300 field. <laughs> These cars, Chris, are so, so high tech. As you say, space train chassis, they might look like the Lexus that you, you drive around stately in the English countryside or the Nissan GT300. It's it. Oh, and again, just, that's the leader then. That's the, uh, that's the second place rather. That's the Hoppies car, isn't it? The, uh, the Kimi Sato. Now they've got to go after the Condo racing car, the 56 car of uh, Sasha Fenestras. And there is his uh, teammate looking, everyone looking very, very concerned. Looking rather <laughs> anxious. Yeah, <laughs> they know there's a lot at stake here this afternoon. <laughs> if you're not familiar with the name uh, Sasha Fenestras, he's actually from France and he's a, he's a, he's a French born. Argentinian from Cordoba, just 19 years old. And he finished third in the Macau Grand Prix last year. Japanese love him. And he's actually leading the Japanese Formula 3 championship this year after four wins. So that's a name for the future. They make their names here in Japan. We'll eventually see them in Europe. Now, Mark, they're coming up to a break because they're just over. They're just lapping the first place car in GT300. And then there will be a break until they catch the end of the, of the 500 yeah. again. That means they can break away now, doesn't it? And perhaps start sending some quick times. They're running at 29s. They were on 28s earlier. The best, best lap, in fact, so far was a 26.7 by... Uh, let's see who that was by. A 26.3 by Kaz Oshima. And that was on the... That five. So. And the pole position car did a 23 2, so uh, they're, they're some way off that, but then they yeah. have fuel, yeah. fuel yeah. rules and, and a, a lot of traffic to contend with. And they're allowed qualifying tyres in this as well, so because they, they have the shootout something like Formula One, it's the best day to keep moving forward. Great shot there 
of the Buriram circuit. And you're looking way, way over into the Cambodian border there and the Khmer temples around here. It's a beautiful part, but it's a part that not all the tourists get to because it's, as we say, 400 kilometers from Bangkok, even further from the, the popular tourist destinations, you know, opposite where and Malaysia and Langkawi are. And uh, you could see there how flat it is. Really, it's yeah. just like a Florida circuit. Yeah, the, it was purpose-built, this circuit. Uh, Bur Buriram decided they wanted to be the Thailand's capital of sport. They built new stadiums for football, for baseball, and they also decided at the same time to build the circuit. Chang Breweries came in with the money, so why not? And it's a great facility, and it's just a shame, Chris. I think you, you were saying before we went on air that under FI regulations, if you have more than one fly, uh, overseas round, it no longer registers yeah. as, a, as a national championship. Yeah, national yeah. championships are allowed one race outside their territory, but, but not two. If you have two, it becomes a, an international championship, and the FIA take take control. Right, so that, that might be this circuit's downfall, then, because they've signed the deal with Pang for the night race next year, so goodbye, Buriram. For, I'm afraid so, for one yes. year, certainly. Yeah. Okay. Unless the FIA relax the, the, the rules, which uh, <laughs> they have been known to, to do from time to time. Right, new fastest lap, 125.6 as Ashima flashes across the line. I think what we saw, Chris, is that how good Nakajima is when he's in traffic. Much better than Ashima, but once, as you say, Ashima got a clear track, he's now setting those fastest laps. Having said that, Nakajima's just set the fastest third sector, uh, sorry, first sector of the lap we're on now. So maybe he is heading for fastest lap as well. No, Ashima's responded with the fastest second sector. So these guys are so they're going absolutely at it. flying. And, and there's your your favourite car, Mark. Ah, the, the hoppy car, yeah. Little hoppy uh, Toyota 86. I'm sure someone somewhere, when they designed that car, thought they were putting happy on the car. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, that, that's a little hoppy car. Our pole starting car here at the moment is in second place still behind the Condo Nissan of Sasha Fenestres. based Argentine driver. There's the Aston Martin. Lovely to see the Astons here, isn't it? There we go. Juan Pablo Oliver on board that car. Everybody loves an Aston Martin, don't they, Chris? Yes, and that, of course, Mark, I once upon a time actually owned one. <laughs> uh, it's lovely to see that car in uh, lovely green, oh, Ast Aston green. Pro proper factory colours, yeah. Yes. And uh, this car, the D-Station Aston Martin Vantage, that's the V12 Vantage, of course, not the, not the UV8. Juan Paulo de Oliveira from Brazil, where else, but from Sao Paulo. And he's doing, been doing this a long time. He was Japanese Formula 3 champion in 2005, took seven wins that year. And that was after being German Formula 3 champion. So the German, winning the German Formula 3 championship in 2003, the Japanese saw that, picked him up took him over to Japan. He was the Formula Nippon champion in 2010 and then followed that up two years later being vice champion. Uh, 2015 was Super GT vice champion with four podiums. And here he is though. He's found his feet now. I mean, he's probably his 500 careers over and they're thinking, well, you know, plenty of racing still, GT 300. They, they pay the money and they provide the drives. Yeah, and there are a lot of uh, other, other European drivers who go over to Japan and race in Japan. Uh, Rossiter, Mardenborough, uh, Lions, all sorts of people, and of course in the past, Lotterer and uh, yeah, well, many others. Well, Andre Lotterer, of course, he may be German, but he lives in Tokyo. He's married to a Japanese, and uh, so he, he has made his life, not just his career, but his life in Tokyo, and he, he has to go to European races as a flyaway visitor. So, so Oshima still leads from Nakajima, Kunimoto in third place, Kondo, Jan Mardenborough in fourth place, Fred Makovicki for NDTP Racing in fifth place, and Rio Hidakawa in sixth place for the Keeper Toms car. That 32 car I've just mentioned in sixth place, sorry, the 37 car. With uh, Hirakawa, that is the car that is uh, won here in 2017 fifth in the championship, uh, second place last time out at Suzuka. Hirokawa, he's 25 year old, comes from Hiroshima and was fourth last year in the Japanese Super GT Championship. 
So what's happening with the Hondas, Chris? I see you. I was just screen. looking for uh, to see where Jensen Button's car is, but uh, yeah, attention always on Jensen, of course. Wherever he goes, they, they love him here. That uh, Button car is the number one car. The Raybrick Honda NSX. That's down in 12th down place, isn't it? Yes. After 15 runners. Fighting continues throughout the field. 14 laps now completed. Big fight going on here. This is the number eight car, which is currently in uh, Just picking up on that. Oh, this is why I look at the replay of the, the pass here. That's the 21 and the 4. That's 21. Yeah, we just missed that battle. The, uh, the that second, third place battle then. Still that hoppy 86 MC Toyota on the streets over here but not quite in this form nice fight continuing there Lap 16 of 66, 51 still here to go. Kaz Oshima still leaving Kaz Nakajima. It's a good name to have, isn't it? Kazuki or Kasuya. These two top of their game and the gap between them just 0.3 of a second. Yes, but the, uh, the gap to the third place car of Kunimoto is now stretching out slightly to uh, three seconds. Yeah, that's the Red Sport Nissan. That's been slightly dropped. And as we know, Nissan have never ever had quite had the edge here that uh, Lexus have over the last few years. They had the double win in 2015. Motoyama and Yanagida won GT500. Kaz Hoshino and uh, Takaboshi won GT300. That was Nissan's best ever race here. Since then, it's been all Lexus. As we see the, the second place battle in GT300 really hotting up here, Mark, yep. with the, the Aston and uh, the yeah, Nissan the really closing down on the... Uh, yeah, De Oliveira's woken up, hasn't he? And, yes, um, he has. Yeah, here we go. Oh, he's goes for the inside of the hairpin. That's turn three at the far end of the circuit, then that long, long haul back up to four. This is a great chance to get a tow and then dive bomb into turn four if he can do it. We saw... Nakajima tried to do that in the GT500. He goes through on the inside. Can't do it. They put, gets back in the slipstream. Um, it's a great place to have a look, isn't it? And you also you let your rival know about it, but it's cost him. Look, because he had to back out of that, it suddenly let um, that third, the Gainer car, Kazuaki Hoshino, the Gainer Nissan, get right onto his tail. So that was a bit of an error there. You say uh, get a tow mark, but the, the Toyota is so small, there's not much tow off that car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's That's Oliveira. Should cut comes back in, uh, in at him again. Should cut through the air better, shouldn't it? So, Hoshino is the man on the move at the moment. Then that's that was a nice move by that uh, ten car, Kazuki Hoshino, 41 years old from Tokyo, son of Kazuyoshi, as we said. Kaz Hoshino actually runs the uh, Impul Racing team. It's not a full factory team, but it is factory supported. He's always been Nissan all his life. And everything that he's done has been for Nissan. 
finished third at the Nürburgring 24 hours a couple of years ago. He's been a consistent front runner. There we go. Great. Look at this lovely shot then of the Toyota against Aston Martin against Nissan. This is what sports car racing, GT racing is all about, isn't it? Different manufacturers. Yes, they the 500s have largely got past the 300s now. So everyone is back to fighting for their own classes as the Aston goes up, goes off out of the slipstream again and tries to pass. But as soon as he pulls out, the, the, the air pressure stops it. <laughs> it, does, it is, you're absolutely right. It's like the Aston Martin runs into a wall as soon as he pulls out. And that lets the Nissan then go close up. But look how much bigger the Nissan is than the other two cars. And uh, the Aston Martin, who had a terrible Le Mans this year. They got pole position. They then got hit with so much uh, balanced performance that it destroyed their race completely. They were just wrecking tires all the time. And uh, one has to feel sorry for Aston. They were here uh, at Le Mans to celebrate the 60 years since their, their famous win with uh, Carol Shelby and Roy Salvadori. And it all went pear-shaped, didn't it? Yes, it did, uh, purely by setting pole time. As yeah. you said, Mark, they were hit with a a really um, you know, cla calamitous um, balance of performance change and uh, that, that ruined their race for all the cars. And, uh, and of course, the other weird thing, Chris, all the years we've been covering sports car racing, that Le Mans two weeks ago ended the season. And we now start all over again with the 2019-2020 season, which starts um, serendipitously at Silverstone, September the 1st. Absolutely. So you want to see these type of cars racing in GT at World Endurance Championship level regulations, make sure you go to Silverstone. Don't miss that four hour race this year, not six hours, but a four hour race, which is only going to be twice as long as this. And of course the other announcement at, at Le Mans was that Aston Martin are going to uh, take part in the... Oh, he's got, him. He goes he got, he's got yes. him. Wow, what a move. Well done. Juan Paolo, great move. And that lets the Nissan. Oh, yeah. That that really put Sato onto the back foot, didn't it? And uh, So now now we've got to see if they can make <laughs> inroads on the uh, on Sasha Finestres. Well, that, that was a super move. So the D-Station, Aston Martin Vantage, team run out of Tokyo. He's pulling away already, and uh, Hoshino's following him in the 10 gainer. Nissan GTR. Interestingly, both those cars on Yokohama's. So 19 laps now. Yes, the Aston is really getting yeah. away. Yeah, I think perhaps he may not have the, the be better straight line speed, but he's got great cornering, hasn't he? And. Uh, that's what was hampering, I think, for a while. Well, there we are. That's the mis one of the Mercedes in captivity. That's the Leon racing car of uh, Haruki Kurosawa. And that car is in sixth place in as an GT300. And, a, and a, as another one of the uh, Nissans goes past the poor little uh, uh, yeah, he's Toyota, going back. he's going backwards. Going backwards. What's happened to that car, the hoppy car? They won't be so hoppy now, will they? As the leaders come through again, this is they're lapping them for the second time, and you can see that the uh, the difference in speeds of the cars there as the leaders go through to them like knife in butter. Anyway, meanwhile up front, what's happening up the top the top end of the field? Well, that's not the top end. Yes, it is a Shima just. Uh, Still being shadowed by that Lexus Il Tom's car, the one we're looking at right now. Yes, Kunimoto's fallen back now, almost five yeah. seconds. These, these two have dropped them, haven't they? But look at the gap between the uh, the blue leader, Ashima's Lexus, and Nakajima's white and orange Tom's Lexus as they continue 20 laps. Just completed, 21 laps we're into now, so we're coming up very rapidly to one third distance. Yes. Now, Chris, if you're a team manager, we're what? We're half an hour, 30, 34 minutes into the race. What will you be thinking at the moment? Well, you've, we've had very few incidents, Mark. 
Uh, maybe we're due for an instant, or, but uh, <laughs> hopefully not. Don't put but, the commentators yeah. first. I mean, normally you, you'd leave them out there for until the the hour mark and make a, a full pit stop then with t four tyres and fuel and put your other driver in, your fresh driver in. Yeah, but 39 cars, you don't all want to be coming in at the same time, do you? No. OK, the GT300s can go that much further, we know that. So they can stop a bit earlier, stop a bit later than the 500s. They, they can play around with the fuel, but the GT500s, I think you're right, they're more or less restricted to the fuel regime. You know, they've got to do that. Yes, because a, a pit stop's going to put you way back, unless, as you say, Mark, that we get some some form of intervention safety car right. or it rains good now when we get to 33 laps it'll be half half distance say we had a safety car at lap 25 then i think the team team managers might be thinking well i might bring him in might leave him out a little bit longer and uh, again that's gonna have we started in sunshine chris look look at it now it is definitely overcast a little isn't it sunny here but there's clouds elsewhere on the circuit one thing uh, we haven't uh, commented on Mark. The interesting thing is the pits are actually behind the grandstand. <laughs> yes. So uh, there we go. We're happy to stop her then. Now this one of the GT three hundred. This is the Leon car coming out of fourth, uh, sixth place, isn't it? In uh, yeah, driver change, fuel, tyres. Right. Well, funny we've just been talking about this. Now they're going to have to leave that driver in if they're not going to penalise themselves for the rest of the race. Have an, long he's going to have an hour and 24 minutes. Can the fuel go that car? Tars. Notice the they gosh. cannot. Yep. Yeah. They cannot change the tires until the fuel you line see the is off. Condition of that Bridgestone coming off it looks very good. It's not graining or anything. It's, uh, anyway, so our first routine pit stop, the Leon Pyramid AMG Mercedes goes back out into the race. That will now obviously tumble down the order. It was in sixth place. We'll see where that comes back. But very, very early call there. Is it possible he had a puncture, a slow puncture? Yes, it, it's, a, it's a funny call, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. He's almost certainly going to have to stop again. Yeah. There we are, the battle for third place then in GT300. We've got a whole gaggle of cars going through there. So we're looking at the moment at uh, Hoshino, Yasuda and Sato. Two of those Nissans running together. Sato, five hoppy car that's been going backwards. But looking around, Mark, there doesn't seem to be any sign of the rain that we no, were, we were anticipating. They're, they're coming in and out of sun, aren't they? There is cloud there, so is that cloud bearing rain? We can't see it at the moment. The forecast this morning is quite categoric about four o'clock thunderstorms but uh, who knows those are local forecasts they should know the weather by now shouldn't they <laughs> <laughs> mind you, as they we know it does rain yeah. time. mind you they got they got the weather pretty wrong in the uk this week it was going to be the hottest ever and it wasn't and it's going to be rain and there wasn't and uh, it's a, it must be a really really tricky career being in, in weather forecasting i'm glad we're doing what we're doing race forecasting Second. We make our mistakes at that as well, oh, yeah. Mark. But the other thing, Chris, we've had a, two days of uh, hard running around here, and the circuit is rubbered up beautifully, so they, they this is as good as it's going to get. There's yep. not too much. There is some wind, but not too much. Track has come to them beautifully this weekend. You can see from all the, uh, the black marks, the rubber on the circuit. And, of course, this circuit also hosts MotoGP. They've got the uh, Thai Grand Prix here this year. It'll be the third successive year they have world superbikes here in the past they've had blanc pan gt3 as we've mentioned the blanc pan asia series interestingly blanc pan the uh, that record here went to tim slade in a porsche at 135 6 and that's exactly what these gt300s are running in the race at the moment they're, they're running 135s at the moment so yeah so they're they are on the pace on, yeah the gt3 500 pole was set by honda that was Jensen Buck last year, of course, 123-3-1. Uh, so they're just a bit, the, po the pole's the same this year, but they're running about two seconds off the pole pace. So the GT300s, so yeah, the... 
GT300s, uh, spot on it. But you can see from that, if Jensen Button's got the, uh, that record, how the reduction in downforce has affected the Hondas maybe more yeah. than other cars. Yeah, that's 2017 they got the reduction, but um, I think they've been tinkering, haven't they? Right, more routine stops. One of the Lexus is stopping then for, and that is the 35 car, that's the Team Thailand car. Right, this is the Panther car, very much a home entry, and they're all Thai eyes, as it were, on that car. 35 30, uh, car, the, the Arto Panta Lexus. This is the one that uh, Sean Walkinshaw, Natapong, Tong Gum, get that right, they share. Who's getting into that at the moment? Well, it's, uh, Natapong's getting out, so Sean Walkinshaw, son of uh, Tom Walkinshaw, of course, the late great Tom Walkinshaw, architect of Jaguar's Le Mans victories still enjoying his racing in Japan. Picking up the uh, dust on the curbing there. Been very good, haven't they, about track limits here? Very good. Yeah, everyone's yes. very clean and tidy on these lines. They've got huge, huge grip, these 500 cars, of course. Still, even though they had a downforce reduction of 25% a couple of seasons ago, but they had still got a, a huge amount. The Arta NSXM, that 55 car, currently that's in GT500. Yeah, there's two two Arta cars, one in 500, one in 300. That Arta car running seventh at the moment, in getting very very close to half distance now. We see another car going into the, onto yep. the pit road there. So yeah, that's uh, uh, the Lexus Team Zent car. That's one of our 500 cars. And uh, also Takua Izawa, he stopped as well. So we've got Honda and uh, Lexus stopping in the pits. Yeah, now these guys might be doing a clever call because they're going to avoid any later traffic jams. But have they got the fuel to get to the end without a splash and dash? They probably have, Chris. <laughs> Just about, <laughs> yes, just about, but uh, as we see. It's getting very busy out there, isn't it? Yes. Just to have a thought for the drivers that work in these cars. It's super, super hot here, as we saw, 34 degrees here today, and these guys are really pushing very, very hard. Now we've got two Bridgestone shod cars out front, followed by two Yokohama tires, uh, tired cars. So yeah. see whether this last, it, it could well be that as the, as the session, season session progresses, uh, things unbalance themselves a bit. Right. Bertrand Baguette's in the pits and the number 17 Kaihin Honda, he's come out of 10th place. Bertrand, the Belgian driver who, uh, won the uh, Formula Renault 3.5 series back in 2009, then went to IndyCar, finished seventh in the Indy 500, and then came back to do all his racing here. In fact, uh, been doing Super GT since 2014, all with Honda. So again, another European driver, the Japanese love. He speaks absolutely brilliant Japanese. He too lives in Tokyo now, like Andre Lotterer. So who's coming in now? The number 19 Wed Sport car. This is the third place car, Chris. Car they're going to call in, Chris. Kunimoto will be handing over to show Savoy. So they're on the on the Yokohama tyres. Yeah. So we'll wait and see. And they've got a very a very small weight handicap. So uh, compared with quite a few of the other cars. Yeah. But this car won here in 2016, so there it is, goes out, that was a quick stop, in and out, almost missed it because he blinked. So Kunimoto coming in, Jan Mardibra is in the pits as well, in the condo car, that's fallen back a bit down the order, Jan uh, I think struggling here today. Oh look, the whole, whole raft of cars going into the pits. Yeah. 
see the pits are actually underneath, underneath the, the stand. Yeah, underneath the, the, the pit entrance comes from behind the grandstand, as you say. It's uh, <laughs> quite weird. Right, there's the 19 car in then. That is the uh, Wet Sport Nissan I was talking about. That change from uh, Kunimoto to show Savoy. Now, those of you who saw the Macau Grand Prix last year, horrendous crash which involved German driver Sophia Florsch, uh, where the car went into I, the I think we all stand. saw that. Well, she went over the back of this driver getting in, Sho Savoy, who does Japanese Formula 3 as well. And, uh, I say that's Japanese. He was last year's Japanese Formula 3 champion. 17 wins. Went to Macau, had those problems. Right. So, very quick change then. That 19 car then going back out. So, they've still got an hour and a quarter to do. They're on 28 laps, so uh, they've got to go a long way on these. Uh, these tires on and on this fuel yeah maybe they're maybe they're banking on a late safety car or something like that so they can make a quick second stop mark yeah that might play out for them so Hirokawa in the pits at the moment in the uh, 37 keeper Tom's Lexus Hirokawa coming out of fifth place he'll be handing over to Nick Cassidy the 24-year-old New Zealander, Nick Cassidy, of course, one of the fastest New Zealanders on the planet at the moment. Again, the tyres coming off the car look in great shape, don't they? Yes, well, it's, um, all, the, all, the, all the corners on, on this circuit are fairly, yeah. uh, fairly even radius. Yeah. There are no tricky tyres. Yeah, we're, so we're not getting any tyre degradation. No. You probably saw Potenza on the side of the tyres there. That's, that is the Japanese Bridgestone Potenza. As I mentioned earlier, Yokohama is Adman in Japan. And, uh, As we see the two leaders there. Yeah, again, look at Nakajima having to thread his way through. And that gap hasn't really, it's still under half a second between those two. Nakajima actually just taking the lead, Chris. As we blink, yeah, it's not yeah. round with him and Nishima. I just think, I just for a minute thought, what's, what's the blue and red car doing behind him? He has taken the lead and, uh, you know, 128 on his last lap. Ashima obviously got held up because he was two seconds slow on that lap. And uh, hopefully we'll see a replay of that. Is this the replay we're looking at at the moment or no? So Kaz Nakajima coming here fresh from his second successive Le Mans 24 hours victory. Leads here in Thailand in uh, Super GT, fourth round here. This is Motorsport TV you're on. You with Chris Parsons and me, Mark Cole. And look at this great battle as uh, Oshima then made up. Haven't, no, he's going around the outside and the Oshima's still the car behind him. Sorry, same coloured car. Yes, yeah, so, well, they're, they're having a battle there with another one of the GT500s. Of course, yep. he's who's got the same power. Who, so he's And who's made a pit stop, of course? Will, it, yeah. will have returned after pit stop. So, so that's shuffled the order up a little bit. James Rossiter in the team Impul car, number 12 now car. Now we're he's going to see the, the overtake. Yeah. Here we go. So this is where it happened. Yeah, he just got completely blocked, didn't he? And uh, lights flashing. Oshima can do nothing because uh, Nakajima just got the jump on him there. Wow. And Nakajima seems to be uh, pulling away. Yeah, well, he's, he's working the traffic to his advantage. Again, as we said, at Le he did this so well at Le Mans during the night particularly. He could thread the needle when other people were struggling a little bit with the traffic. And uh, here we are putting that art into practice here at Buriram Circuit in Thailand. Yes, and he's... Okay, pit stop time for both of them. First both cars and second in. come in. Well. Now it's time for the mechanics to get to work. Yeah, this is their, as you say, this is where they get the limelight here this afternoon. So into the lead then will go Heike Kobelainen, the 39 car. 39 Lexus, Denso Saad car, and when he stops, he'll be handing over to Yuchi Nakayama. So a lot of activity in the pits at the moment. Nakajima will be handing that 36 car over to Yuhi Sekiguchi. 
pole at Suzuki last time out. They're just putting some uh, extinguish on to the brakes. They're getting very, very hot, those rear brakes. Oh, look at this. this is oh, almost an unsafe release, but good good work there by the... Uh, now, interesting, the Mark, pit crew, Chris. Um, as we saw one of the Fords, uh, Le Mans, got penalised for wheel spin. Yeah. <laughs> and that uh, Lexus wheel spun out of the pit, so yeah, will he be met? Will he I hope we see a replay, but they did avoid an unsafe release penalty. Good work by the O'Toms team. The guys uh, just managed to stop him in time after releasing him, so uh, great to see that. So very, very busy pits here at Buriram at the moment as we approach the halfway mark of this 300 kilometer race, 66 laps. Race leader then into the pits. Heike Kovalainen and had his moment of glory in the sun. Brings the Lexus team, Saad car in. I hope we'll see that pit stop because, oh, <laughs> that's getting a bit uh, racy, isn't it? Three abreast down the back stretch. Coming up to turn four, who's gonna blink? Wow. <laughs> Close stuff. Superb racing here then from, as always, in Super GT. It's never, ever boring, is it? Let's just remind you who's leading at the moment. Condo Racing were leading. Uh, that was Sasha Fenestras. He's been out front for a long time in GT300. He's in the pits as we speak, handing that 56 car over to Kazuki Yiramine. So that now, who's our race leader, Chris? Come on. Aston will, uh, yeah. will take the lead for a while until they make yeah. it. That was the Rocky, Rocky Kato we just saw there in the uh, number two um, cars, Tokai Dream 28 entry. Rocky Kato, of course. So we have, we have uh, Ronnie Quant Quantarelli uh, out front now yeah. because, of course, he has not made a pit stop. So we're, we're waiting for everything to unravel again. So here we are then. This is Fenestras handing over the leading GT300 car. And that car being taken over, as we said, by uh, Kazuki Hiramine. No char changes until the refueling nozzle is off. So it run by Kondo Nissan. Well, that team that realized, realized what? <laughs> so the man from Cordoba, French based, hands over to the 26 year old Japanese driver from Osaka, Hiramine. 2012, he was Japanese Formula 3 vice champion and uh, He's done his more recent racing in what they call uh, Super Taiku, which is the next level down from Super GT. It's more for production-based cars, but it's very, very popular in Japan. And he was vice champion in that two years ago. Now, Mark, we're just passing the half halfway mark. 33 laps out yep, of 66. So at, uh, at the end of this lap, yeah, that'll be a halfway point. Has everyone stopped yet? Who hasn't, who hasn't made a pit stop yet? Our 23 Nissan hasn't. The number one Team Kinemitsu car hasn't. But I think, Chris, everyone else has. Now we've got one further in. The Aston Martin hasn't stopped yet in GT300. In fact, there's quite a lot of GT300 cars. All those have yet to make their stop. But this is watching uh, Ronnie Kintarelli's progress not looking at the moment but that 23 Nissan will have to stop soon we'll hand over to Sugio Matsuda of course Kintarelli having won two of this year's races So they've gone beyond the halfway mark. So, uh, yep. So they're in, a, they're in a very good position. Yes. Because they're, they're still making up track time up front. They've got, uh, how much 
much have they got at the moment? Their lead. Se and se and he's in. 7.5. He's just come in then. I'll bet they both have, in fact. So the question is, where do they come out? Dasuke Nakajima will take the lead, or he won't, in the team Mugen Honda. That number three car. That's the car that... Uh, Also have number uh, one car just there. That's the, that's the car he'll be handing over to Jensen Button. Yep. Mm. Well, there we are. There was the uh, Nismo car. Here's the Raybrig car. Just talking about the. Last year's championship winning car, Jensen Button, will be taking that car over from Yamamoto. So here's Jensen's chance then to get the pedal to the metal and see if he can't do something about Nissan never having, uh, sorry, Honda, never having won here, either in GT500 or GT300. So there we have our leaders, Mark. Yep. And we're waiting for, for yeah, the timing screens to yeah, catch well that up. Well, that, yeah, that is the lead battle. Um, it will be the lead battle when the Aston Martin stops. Um, Katuoko in the good smile racing. Mercedes. He'll be handing over to Taniguchi. But again, Chris, very... None, none of these top five in GT300 have stopped yet. They, they can go the distance, of course. Smaller engines, less power, less fuel use. Yeah. And of course, they're, they're lighter, so they don't uh, yep. they don't burn up the tyres so much. So just looking at Nick Cassidy there on the caption, where is Nick in that number four car? The screen is just changing itself as we speak. Nick Cassidy then. So we have the two Lexuses back at, yep. the, uh, in the, at, the, at the top of uh, yep. GT. Nick, so Nick Cassidy has just moved up to third place, Chris, as, uh, as we looked at those pictures in that number number 37 Lexus, the Keeper Tom's car. Bad news for everyone else is it's a Lexus 1, 2, 3 at the moment yes. after the pit stops. In fact, it, it's a 1, 2, 3, 4. But we've got, it's still very tight at the top, Mark. Under half a second between the number six Lexus of Yamashita and the number 36 Lexus of Seki, Seki Sekiguchi. Sekiguchi, yeah. Uh, but Nick Cassidy has now fallen 11 seconds yeah, behind, which is not far. Yeah, but I mean, he's, lap he's actually lapping quicker than they are at the moment. So hopefully we'll see some uh, change out. Right, this is for the lead. This is Yamashita against Sekiguchi. Trying to put him off by yeah. flashing his lights. Well, so they, they've picked up the battle that uh, we had earlier on between uh, Oshima and uh, Nakajima, of course. And they've, this is just now continuing. Certainly doesn't get much closer than no, that, Mark. It's the wrong way around as far as Nakajima is concerned now. But uh, how quickly can Sekiguchi pull in? I think he's there. Yeah. We, so we've got a, a, an car. hour of glorious motor racing coming yeah. up. Must be funny. Um, Nakajima, of course, be, has been was following that blue and red car for some time. There he is. And of course, that that blue and red car is run by Tom's Le Mans team, not by. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the wrong ram. There we go, then. The Waco and the O Lexus Lexi battling it out here. As we go into the second oh. half, oh, our first incident of the whole race. There's been a collision, hasn't there? There's bits on the. This is uh, the 16 car. This is one of the. Uh, That's the Motor Mugen Honda NSX. Uh, what's happened there? That is I a five. There, there's been, and, there's and been there's a collision. Another hasn't car there? Off the road there, there. there was a collision there. You don't spin there normally. Let's see if we get a replay of what happened there. Who was involved in that? Here we go, here's the replay. Well, no, it wasn't a collision, he lost the back end. Is that a puncher? It, it looks, yeah. yes, yeah, it he's is. Got a rear, yes. Rear left puncher, hasn't he? 
Right, so that's why there's debris on the track. The tyre's delaminated and uh, our first incident, can you believe, in an hour of racing. Without putting on the commentator's curse, let's hope it's the <laughs> last one. <laughs> Only a local yellow. I presume he'll move that car himself. Yes, but it, it's the, uh, the problem of debris on the circuit. Yeah, they considered it. They just came past it there. We just, just saw that. That was the point it happened. So here we go. Let's have a look, see what happened. Was there some door handling, body rubbing, which caused that puncture? We're just looking at the, the pass there. That's, uh, yeah. yeah, there's some... That's what's happened, isn't it? There's been a uh, seems that oh, there's a big, the big clash there. Of uh, he's already got the puncher there because as he ran onto his curb, so yes, spark, sparks flying up. Had a bit of a tank slapper. Yeah. So this is the top four fight in GT, and we've just lost. I say lost into the pits. Uh, Shinjiki Takagi is making a pit stop in the Arta car. That's the 55. Two Lexuses go at it, hammer and yeah, tongs. Yeah, Arta Honda. Yeah, this lead battle's going to go on and on, isn't it? It yeah. is. We've still got yellows then down at turn one. Safety car, we got the safety car, Chris. Right, this right. is going to play right into the hands of anyone who hasn't yet stopped. In fact, there's only two or three cars. We've got one, two, three, four cars. Pit lane closed, of course, so they're going to have to wait. How long will it take to clear that debris? At the end of this lap, the pit lane will open. They'll be able to go in but we've got three cars who've yet to stop that's the number four see which that is that's yeah the number four mercedes the number two lotus you never thought you'd hear the word lotus did you and the other car that has yet to stop in the gt300 field when in fact he went in as just as we uh oh yeah the number 96 car the as we see the incident again right K Tunes with, Lexus. With, uh, yeah, it was just with actually, there are three Honda NSXs there. Yeah, all, all running in a big gaggle. Yeah. Yes. Um, but they got too close too close together. This is where they touched. Yeah, the. Well, that's the, the one car. That's, that's the Jensen Button car involved in that. So a lot more was going on than we realised at the yes. time. And that spun out one of the. That's, that's, is that Button's car involved? The blue one? Looked like it could have been. Yeah, so that's not, it's not a puncher, though. it's a broken rear suspension. Contact with Jensen Button. They've got the car back in the garage now, haven't they? So there's that another one being put in. That's the number 16 car, which is the uh, the other NSX. Yeah, that's the other one that's involved in that. It's, he obviously went to the pits. So under safety car, then, on lap 39. This is the Arta NSX being... The off the circuit. Now, Mark, this this opens up the the question of the the people who stopped early who might have a, a fuel problem. This is helping yep, them. This is helping them. The Heike Kobelainen car, for instance, which was the first to stop. Ever efficient work here. We've got a lot of Super GT marshals coming over from Japan to help out the Thai marshals. So a good cooperation then. And a, a very uh, convenient. Um, gate there to, yep. to be dragging the car off the circuit which means that the safety car won't need to stay out for too long so let's just update you then on the current positions it's wacko lexus leading o lexus leading keeper lexus leading sard lexus and the first of the hondas in fifth place that's the kahin real racing nsx but uh, jetson button what's happened to him has he fallen down the order heading for the pits I think that might have been his car mark that was going behind the wall there no, not his is the blue one they can't the number one car is the blue one no he's, he's down there he, he's lost a lap no he's made it he he, he, made, he got back to the pits he's made two pit stops All right. so Jensen basically I think on his out lap that, that happened got tangled up with two other NSX's both in GT300 well, pit lane still closed. Anyone 
who's running on fumes will, will have a problem. <laughs> well, of course, the regulations are, aren't they? You can go in for a splash and dash, but only a splash and dash, and then you have to make your proper fuel stop. I think it says what's happened to the 18 car here. That's the that's the 16 car, 18? Yep. Which one is that that's in the pits at the moment? 18 car, that's the uh, Team Up Garage. Wonderful names these, aren't they? Team Up Garage Honda, of Takashi Kobayashi and Kasuko Matsura. Yes, and then they're... Well, it looks like they're taking a penalty of some sort, but... Or maybe just have to sit and wait there till the safety car comes around. Or the pit lane opens. Yes. Yeah. He was obviously running on fumes, and not enough of them. As the two leaders, uh, one thing that it, that it is appearing, Mark, is when the safety car does go off, the two leaders are going to be free to race, and they're going to have a, an empty circuit. Got a clear circuit ahead of them. Yeah, good yeah. point, Chris. Good point. Have a look at that instead again. There's Jensen Button in that blue Raybrick Honda. So somehow he's going to get involved in this, and he gets too close, doesn't he, to the motor car? It's, it's an all Honda take each other out situation. So that motor car. 16 car catches the back of Jensen, almost spins Jensen, I think he does spin and then Jensen. gets collected. Maybe Jensen does go around, but we're not, we're not seeing it at that point. I think the cameraman was so shocked he dropped everything and ran for it. It's a long way away, but yeah, Jen no, well, Jensen. Well, I saw, didn't spin, but he got his, but his rear wing was hit. You saw that. You saw his yes. wing, rear wing guard. So another disaster then for Jensen Button in his. Uh, defense of his 2018 title it's not going to happen for him this year is it no this is the halfway point of the season and they are way way down well there is his teammate Naoki Yamamoto co-champion with him last year Yamamoto 30 years old from Toshigi and there is Jensen then no that's the four car sorry that's the uh, so pit lane is still closed so not opening as we expected it to in European racing. Normally it's closed for one lap behind the safety car, but the safety car is staying out a long time, Chris. Sure, yes. Surely they've dealt with everything now. The car's behind the you wall. Would, you would think so. There was a Debris being picked up. They didn't have to take it very far away to get it behind the wall. So, uh, so what's, yeah, there's what's our race the leader then, Kenta Yama Shita in the Le Mans Lexus. Yamashita's uh, teammate, Kazuki Oshima, looking up at these screens. The safety car lights are still on, so yeah. the safety car's going to stay out. Now let's see if anyone... Oh, ah. they're, they're halting the race from it. They're neutralizing the race. But we're not getting the information why. So we're going to get two starts for the price of so one mark. I'm just wondering, there's, there's Jensen Button then rejoining. He's going to be out of everything. Oh, just coming in. I wouldn't be surprised, Chris, if they put that car into the garage and leave it there. But uh, yeah. yeah, they're dollying it, aren't they? So just checking for what damage there is. Oh, yes. Jensen will not be happy about yeah. this. His weekend in Thailand coming to a somewhat abortive end. Well, just going back to the fact they're neutralizing the race, is it because there's so much debris they want to get marshals out on the track to clear up? Well, there, there are an awful lot of cars in this race, Mark, yeah. so uh, it, it's very busy and uh, one assumes that they don't have the facility of having uh, slow zones or full course yellow. Full yeah, they, course yellow so they might, they might even want to get a sweeper out there. M might be so much carbon shards out there at that point of the track anyway we so uh, it's all over uh, Jensen must be feeling absolutely gutted poor guy and he got two laps in didn't he after his uh, stop yes, it's a long way to come for two laps yeah so the body language says it all he's just having a look see what the damage is so oh no I, no I think what we're doing Chris I think they're getting them back into GT500 GT300 order aren't they it's probably what they're yes. doing very conscious all the time of the speed differential between the two categories and they don't want at the restart for there to be a, a huge coming together 
Yeah, so here we are. We've got GT 500s up front in their race order. Come on, Lexus. O Lexus, Keeper Lexus and the Saab Lexus, and then the fifth car in that group should be the Honda. The KN Real Honda of Super Koshi. So we're... But pit lane's still closed, and we have still got one, two, three. Our top three, the GT300, have not yet made their fuel stops. Yeah, well, they're, they're going to virtually have to, yeah. have to go into the pit straight away. Well, certainly in, in Blanc, Pam, we know the cars can run for about 70 minutes. Plus, they've had the bonus of being under a safety car for the last yeah. three or four laps. So it should be all right. But I think we'll be seeing a mass dive by the top three. But we've only got 25 laps to go, Mark. Yeah. So, uh, which yeah. are 50, 50 minutes, so. Yeah, we, we keep talking about two hours. Of course, it may be longer now because they will run to the, the length, not, not the hours. It, it, it is a 300-kilometer race, not a timed race. Yeah. And it, it looks at the moment that we're not going to get any rain. So, uh, well, uh, yeah. Although, although <laughs> storms can brew up very quickly in Thailand. So, just to remind you, this is Buriram. If you're just joining us on uh, Motorsport TV, I'm Mark Cole with me, Chris Parsons. We're still recovering from the Le Mans 24 hours, but uh, this is a different type of racing on the other side of the world. Buriram on the northeast corner of Thailand, very close to the Cambodian border. You can actually see into Cambodia from here. But we are 400 kilometers from Bangkok, so it's, chances are you've not been to this part of Cambodia. Uh, uh, sorry. Thailand, uh, unless you've been visiting Cambodia, the Khmer temples around here, and this is known as the city of happiness, the city of sport. And here we are, they're doing what they love motorsport on a Sunday afternoon. Yep. And what June. we love, Mark. And what we love. <laughs> <laughs> so, presumably, the, uh, the safety car will uh, peel off into the pits yep. and we'll go racing again. And they've gotten sorted out so that the, they're in the correct order, as again, you know, safety always the heart of this you don't want gt 500s restarting behind gt 300s because that's a recipe for another stoppage at turn one yes. as we've seen so many times before so if you're just joining us or if you've forgotten it's number six kenta yamashita for Le Mans lexus from number 36 yuhi segiguchi for o lexus nick cassidy the new zealander in third place for keeper lexus yuchi nakayama the Saab Lexus in fourth place, and the first of the rest of the field, the Kane Real Racing Honda of Kunai Tsukakoshi in fifth place. Back in GT300 at the back of this, we have got at this moment a good smile. Mercedes leading, that's uh, something new, having Mercedes up front in this racing. He's got to make a pit stop though, so has the number two car, the Sintium Apple Lotus of Hiroki Kato. Hiroki Kato, many of you may remember, racing in Formula One and racing in IndyCar as well. He raced at Rockingham, I remember that very well. Had a long chat with him there in the old days. That's the old days when there was a track called Rockingham. Then the K-Tunes Lexus in third place that at the moment still in the hands of Sina Sakaguchi. He'll be handing over to Morio Nita. Morio Nita, one of the oldest drivers in the race, 52 years old from Tokyo, but it's never been a bar. This is Pro-Am GT300, so yes, and, and doesn't matter if you're 70. You go out there and enjoy yourself. And people do. So the safety car's still out there, Mark. Yep. Um, They're making a meal of this, aren't we, they? Yeah, we thought it was going to come in at the end of the last lap, and it's, it's staying out. Have they done another lap since they, yes. since they stopped and reformed? Yep. Right. This is the second lap since they've reformed. So. Right. But the lights on the safety yep. car are out, so we're getting we're ready getting, to go yeah, racing. Here we are, and uh, immediately let Yamashita's backing up the field, isn't he? He's gonna, then he's going to go for it. Wait and see. Now the safety car line will be after this S's, I should imagine. They're getting ready. Yeah, Yamashita backing the field up. He's got Segu Sekiguchi behind him, Cassidy, Nakayama. Now, before we had this uh, safety car, Chris, uh, you pointed out the gap to back to Cassidy was about 11 and a half seconds. That gap's gone now. So 
it's Cash at his race to win this now in that 37 car. The white keeper, Tom's Lotus. And Let's see what Cash can do. <laughs> and they're racing. Yes, and, and as you say, Mark, Cassidy already looking very racy, uh, right on the, uh, the tail of the other uh, Lexus. Yeah, he was second last time out at Suzuka, so Nick is looking for uh, a big, big result here today. He hasn't had that win yet this year yet. Had a non-finish in Okayama in the rain. He only 10th in Fuji, but second last time out at Suzuka. Here we go, Cassidy having a look down the inside. Wow, he does it, pulls it off. It. Yes. Great move, that's into turn three, the hairpin. Oh, and he hits him, hits, oh! oh. Well, that, no, and that's lost him in a, a that two was, more places. That was brutal, Chris. I think there might be a penalty for Cassidy for that. He just barged him, he knocked him off the circuit, he hit those rumble strips, and that car flew up into the air. That was Sekiguchi, and the Sekiguchi, as you say, falling down the order now. May well have done damage to the car because yeah. that was, uh, as you said, o over those baguette um, bumps. Not Bertrand baguette, but... <laughs> <laughs> what they call them in Austria? Sausage, yes, yeah, the sausage curbs. Yes. I, I prefer yours, the baguette. It's much, much classier, <laughs> much more French. So here's the battle then in GT300. What's happening now? We are waiting. As one of the Nissans goes off the road. All oh, right. This is the fourth place battle, but of course this is all up in the air at the moment because the, some of these cars have got to stop. In fact, they are stopping. Those top three have all gone into the pits. And um, that means Condo Racing, the 56 Condo Racing Nissan should emerge on the top of this. Once they're all in the pit stops. So the, the, the top two now, Nick Cassidy yep. closing in. I said this is going to be Cassidy's race to win, didn't I? He was you in a perfect mark, position yes. there, but that was a very clumsy pass he made, and uh, right at that point, in fact. And uh, Yes, but you could say that the other car... <laughs> Sekiguchi could have given him some space, yes, yes but... Yep, but <laughs> yep. No doubt the stewards will be discussing it. Yep. <laughs> Anyway, that car doesn't seem to have, uh, have any no, damage. Back so up the speed. They're 34 degrees now. Air temperature 43 on the track, as you can see. So huge, huge grip there. And we've noticed from the pit stops, very, very little tyre degradation. So that's not something these guys are worrying about. So you can really start to let it go. We've got uh, just under 45 minutes of... Well, They're the two leading cars yeah. already overtaking lapping again another 300 yeah that's nick cassidy yeah cassidy oh oh a bit of a lock up there and that that went all wrong for the three cars following it didn't someone had to back out of that locked up the rear tires yeah. that won't help but cassidy man on a charge nick cassidy let's just tell you closing in on yamashita yeah let's just right remind you about nick cassidy one of the uh, best new talents out there 24 years old from auckland in new zealand he was the 2012 2013. And he's going for it again oh, at the oh, same oh, place at yeah. the hairpin. Cassidy does not take prisoners. And he can't pull it off this time because uh, Yamashita is not going to bow and say, oh, please go through. This now Cassidy is going to be on the outside yeah, of this corner. This is getting very, very nasty. And he's going round the outside. Yeah. Whoa. More contact, more contact. And again, he has to back out of it, Cassidy did all he could there. The Japanese are normally terribly polite, not in this situation. I oh, am but not Cassidy's not Japanese, Mark. No, no, I'm talking about, uh, <laughs> talking about Yamashita. No politeness there. He's just slamming the door on him all yeah. the time. Great racing. So, this is good racing. Really great so Cassidy, everything he's done, he's been champion at. Japanese Formula 3, he was champion in 2015, had seven wins there. He won Super GT in 2017. He was vice champion last year and he wants to be champion again. Vice champion, of course, to Jensen Button last year. Jensen's out of the race, as we saw, after a three car Honda collision. Best for manufacturers not to have all their cars colliding with each other, Chris, but we'll have to look at that one. And that's uh, Show Savoy in the Wet Sport Lexus, who's now inherited third place. Uh, Sikaguchi has fallen down another place, Chris. So I'm not sure his car is that good. He's running 28th at the moment. Yes, and uh, 
Amasita These guys uh, are all flashing, and yeah. flashing another GT3 car. They're coming up on one of the Mercedes. Right. Now look out for the third car in GT500, the number 19 Wed Sports car. He has just put in a 26.2, a whole second faster than the two cars ahead of him. So. Oh, well, they Subo were having their own private a, little battle. Yeah, they were definitely holding each other up there. And that's let Savoy close right up now. So let's see how that one pans out. There is Savoy now, just coming into your picture. He, in turn, has got uh, Yuchi Nakayama on his field. Back down in GT300, just to let you know, it's Kondo Racing. It's this sand leading there, the 56 car. And that car currently in the hands of Kazuki... Hiramine, he took that car over quite a long time ago, one of the earlier stoppers from Sasha Fenestras. And that car is actually run by the Kondo Technical College. It's part of their engineering degree, so how about that? Good way to learn. Yep. Very good way to learn. So, great racing now, as this race really wakes up as we go to the final third of it. This lap will have uh, 18 laps remaining. There we are, there is that Wacko's car. The six car. The six car rather in the condo racing. with the Tom's car. Doesn't seem to be going backwards at the moment again. Uh, Mark, it seems to be keeping up, so. Uh, yeah. But he's got to fall quite a long way back now. Well, there's a lot of buddy rubbing. Here we go, look, here it goes again. This is where uh, Nick Cassidy goes on down the inside. In oh, fact, that's Cassidy this being monstered by Savoy, isn't it? Or is this, uh, oh, this is the earlier one, sorry, yeah, when he pushed the Sekiguchi off. That was brutal, wasn't it? Just shoved him over the curbs, and uh, unfortunately for Sekiguchi, he got, got the wrong <laughs> bit. Well, somebody's not happy about that. <laughs> and that's Kaz Nakajima, of course. <laughs> now, I think the million dollar question, Chris, will there be a penalty for that uh, white and red I don't think top so. Scar? You think, you think so, Mark? Well, I thought it was brutal. <laughs> oh, this is racing. Yeah. So, good racing going on throughout the field here. Yamashito seems to be getting away from Nick Cassidy again. Yeah. As the Tom's car tries to make up that for that yeah. disaster. Sekiguchi actually. Uh, Pulling back on that last lap, he managed to get a second back on the car ahead of him, which is the Nakayama Team Saad Lexus. Just to look to see how this is the fifth and sixth. Right, yeah, they're only, now. they're only five yeah. seconds behind. They're, Nakayama, they're not far. They've, got, they've got just under 20 laps to do it in. If he's going to uh, catch up, catch back up with the leaders, he's got to get past those other two cars pretty quickly. Yeah. I mean, what we do know is everyone's taken all their stops, so this is the sprint now to the checkered yeah. over the last 37 minutes. Or might not be 37 minutes. We keep counting, it's just two hours. We just get off that. <laughs> 18 laps to go. One safety car period, perhaps over long, but we then discovered why, because they needed to uh, sort out the field rather than the Americans who have a wave by. This way they do it just by stop, bringing everyone back to the grid, stopping them and then getting them into, splitting them into the right orders. So it's so Cassidy at 25 on the last lap, Chris, so he was... Uh, Point three the second quicker and in yes, fact he, he has you closed can see up it now yeah. Mark, how much he's he's yeah. caught him. Ah we've got a car off here. Yeah. One of the Mercedes spinning out backwards, but as we said that Savoy has just put in uh, fast his own fastest lap of the race. He's done a 26-4. So 
Are we going to get a yellow flag with that Mercedes? Can he get himself back into the action? And there, now this this will be interesting, Mark, because the two leaders here are coming up on a gaggle yeah. of uh, GT300. So it, again, it's going to be who can work the traffic best. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They've got about so, yeah, eight or nine cars in front of them, yeah. so they're going to be. Good point you made, Chris. What they're doing now, they're, they're catching up with the GT300 field after the re-release. So, so we're seeing what happened on lap seven earlier on at the real start. Now we're, now we're seeing a repeat of that. They've got to work their way through the whole GT300 field. This could be Cassidy's chance. He's always been good in traffic. He was uh, vice champion by one point to Jensen Button last year. That's how close it was. Button, I mean, uh, you have to feel for Jensen, you know, his Formula One career is over. He's even given up his uh, Le Mans WEC career to concentrate on Japanese racing. And, and look what happens. And he's having a bad year, yeah. isn't he? Really is. But Yamashito seems to be threading. Yep. Lamborghini Thread. then? Yep. Just to remind you, there are Huracans here in captivity. Great to see them. These are run by J Lock, the Japanese Lamborghini Owners Club. Been going for many, many years. So lovely mixture of cars there, Lamborghini, Mercedes, there are Porsches in there, Aston Martin of course, where is that Aston Martin by the way Chris, that seems to have faded doesn't it, yes it does, had a nice start, so we've got Lamborghinis running together, we've got Hondas with them, we've got uh, the X-Works car, oh. Nissan of uh, Sean Thong, that's the name to come to him, isn't it? Marchie Lee and it's Sean Thong, both from Hong Kong. <laughs> the uh, the Aston's yeah, fourth. There is the Aston. Yeah, okay, yeah, he's fourth. It, yeah. It's fourth in, in GT300. Yeah, just saw him going through the picture then. It's, it's things are getting very, very racy. So out front, uh, Yamashita's now got... Oh, he's opened the uh, gap up the, again. He, yeah, he's, he's yeah. out. And well, it, it's all these... These yeah. GT 300 cars, Mark. Yeah. You know they're they're really. Uh, um, and uh, Sekiguchi can do nothing now, can he? In that yes, he's falling Oka, back. Yeah, okay. he's, he's, well, he's eight seconds behind now. Oh, as we see cars going yeah. all over the place. Being, cu being kind to get Sekiguchi, there may be damage from that coming together with the Cassidy. Probably more the bounce might have done some damage, but he, he's still lapping at 27s, which the people around him are. So. Gosh, that's like the M25 oh, there. Yeah. Gosh. Very busy yeah. section of track. It's the M25 in a quiet day because they're moving <laughs> quite fast. <laughs> so there is that motor car. 15 laps to go then. Now, of course, Mark, as soon as the leaders get get past this these uh, GT300, they're going to have a, a clear lap a clear circuit in front of them like they did yep. last time. So that's when with um, with uh, only just over 10 laps, well, 14 laps left, uh, they're, they're really going to go for it. So there we are, that is our race leader. Six Lexus from the 37 car. The 37 car has dropped back a lot now. Uh, Nick's obviously got heavily caught up in traffic. That gap is 1.6 seconds last time round. Yeah, they're both on the same Bridgestone tyres, yeah. so uh, uh, th that there shouldn't be any difference yeah. there. I think, so I think it's just I, the traffic, Mark. Yeah, I don't think tyre wear is going to be any... You know, tyres are going to be a problem now with that long safety car period. No. They have a cooling off time and they back up to speed now. So there, the 64 car, that is the tail ender at the moment in GT500. Narain Karthikeyan, the Indian driver on board that car. That indeed is Narain's co-driver, Tadasuke Makino, looking on. Narain Karthikeyan, of course, who famously uh, failed to start the Le Mans 24 hours in 2009 when he jumped over the pit wall. And broke his... And well, yeah, he pulled his pulled his back, didn't pulled he? Him, yes. And they uh, couldn't couldn't make a start for Collis. Yeah. If you're unkind, Chris, you might say that probably with a blessing in disguise, but you wouldn't say that, <laughs> would you? So I like that. Uh, just had a, a lovely uh, signal from the pits there. 
well, Nick from uh, Kenta Yamashita from the Wacko's car just uh, giving us the yeah, we're going to win this. Nick Cassidy uh, looks as if he's pulling in on Yamashita, but the uh, our timing is not showing that, but we'll see. Yeah, still showing 1.6, isn't it? Yeah. Didn't put their lap times. In fact, they were, they were pretty close on the last lap. They both did the 26.7, so... And uh, Yuhi Sekuguchi, uh, now now quite a long way down. It, he's uh, about 11 or 12 seconds yeah. behind. So yeah. he's falling back. Now the timing screens are also very cleverly giving us their championship standings as of this moment. So I think when we just saw uh, from the pits there, we, we saw Kenta Yamashita. Sorry, he's driving. It was Kaz. Kazoshima from the pit wall giving us the yeah yeah they're actually leading the championship at this moment if they stay in there it's a second place car then in uh, GT300 Keishi Ishikara that gainer car on board it at the moment that's the technical college Nissan we talked about The, the manufacturer involvement in this championship is, is very good, isn't it, yeah, Mark? It yeah. really is. It's, it's huge. They, they do spend millions and millions. Nissan, Honda, Lexus, particularly on the 500 class, because this is what sells cars. There's your car, Chris, your favourite. Number seven, Aston Martin. The lovely Aston Martin. Yeah. yeah. There's glorious colours here, and uh, well done for using them, guys. D-Station, Aston Martin. But I'm afraid it's Someone gone, back, gone back to fifth place yeah. in the class. Well, it had its moment in the sun, didn't it? They, they did lead very briefly. So 12 laps to go at the end of this lap. As we look at the uh, fight further down, this is for third place. Ishiwara in the Zent Lexus against Sekiguchi. Coming back in the O car. And Nick Cassidy is now eating into the Yamashita's He's starting Yamashita's to lead. Starting. He's just done his own fastest lap for Cassidy, or well, that car's fastest lap. Yeah, but... Uh, dipped into the 25. It's Yamashita has, has responded with, a, <laughs> with a, a 20 second first sector, so uh, yes. Yeah, there's so a, it's rocking and rolling, aren't they? They yeah. know exactly what they are. They're, they're, they're in radio contract, the teams, they're telling them where the spotters are telling him where they are on the track and, and what, just telling him Yamashita to maintain that gap. So if Cassidy does a quick lap, he does a quick sector of return. That is the Zent squad. The Thomas Boss, Moya Rabashito. I have to say, Chris, a fairly incident free race so far. We had that one. Uh, Multiple on the pileup, which took Jensen <laughs> Button out of the race, and then we had that fairly, fairly large moment for uh, between Cassidy and Sekiguchi. Mark, what's a what's a trio of Hondas? <laughs> a trio of Hondas. A trio of Hondas. I don't know. I have, to, I have to think about that one. A handful of Hondas. <laughs> so Sekiguchi, Chris, I'm afraid, has fallen down to eighth place now looking from the screen so he's dropped from was in third or was in second of course when Cassidy barge passed him uh, his race is definitely going backwards yes and uh, Yamashita has pulled out again as, as you said Mark he set, he set that Faster sector time, yeah. and he's he's pulled away to 1.4. Yeah, so that's he seems to be able to control the race from the front. Just can open and close that gap as he wishes, and yes. uh, if he can stay there. Ten laps left. Yeah. So what's going to come first? The 66 laps or the two hours? It's. Uh, without the safety car it, could, it would have been probably an hour, hour 50 race which means that the, the fuel strategies 
gave them a much bigger window, didn't it? Yes. But it has been a very, a very clean yeah. race, apart from just a couple of incidents. But by the same token, a very, very fast race as well. And, uh, a spot on with the uh, lap times. Hiroki Yoshiwira in the Zen car that we look at. Remember, it goes 70th to stun that car's fastest lap of the race. He's looking to Looking to see who done the has done the fastest lap. Sak Sakaguchi, yeah, I think he's just falling, falling back. So there must be some sort of damage to that car. Yeah. And here we go. Uh, here we see the leaders, but uh, Nick Casti still one and a half seconds behind. And as we can see on our screen, ten laps to go. Certainly, as far as GT300 is concerned, the battle's still going on there between the Kondo, Nissan, and the Gamer Nissan. So it's all Nissan there. The Honda again, Chris. You know they they they've never come away from here with any success. They've had no wins in either category. It looks like it's going to be the same again. Yes. They've all been shared between uh, Lexus and Nissan across the two categories. But Lexus. So Nick Cassidy then, is he a bad boy today or are the stewards going to treat that we, as a, we, a racing incident? <laughs> I think I'd go for racing incident as Nick Cassidy comes up on the Lotus. Yeah, there's plenty of room. Lovely to see a Lotus there, isn't it? Yes. Like, like the days when Hugh Chamberlain used to run low, low tie. <laughs> This is the new generation Lotus. That's that's one of the mother cars. It's a Lotus body on a space frame. And, uh, so let's show Suboy in the uh, Wed Sports Lexus running in third place. Having a very solid run there. Jukunimoto then. Looking on as his teammate. Puts that wet sport car in a good place. I mean, it's a good solid podium, that, but it's 5.7 seconds off the race leader. Yes, as the another car swoops past yes, the is, Lotus. This is the fourth place uh, condo car, the 24 car, which has got uh, Masanori Takaboshi on board at the moment. So the director is picking up the. Uh, Top runners at the moment. Hopefully, we'll see the uh, number 56 car. Yes. Next. Yeah, that's the condo car just picking up in the GT300. And there is the third place gainer, Nissan. Yeah, the top two are, are just equaling each other yeah. on, on sector times. Yamashita setting a 20.518 yeah, and Cassidy at 20.528. So uh, what we have very, here, very close. Yeah, indeed. but at the moment, Chris, we've got a Nissan lockout of that podium. They're all, all Nissans, those top three cars, 56, 10 and 11. So that's really come to the race today, hasn't it? Yes. Nissan may be nowhere in the uh, 500 category, but looking good for 300. Yes, the... As you say, again, Mark, um, Honda and the Chang circuit really don't seem to, no. <laughs> to mix. They, Honda have had a, a poor day. Pity. Yeah. Jensen may well have been the victim of that uh, coming together, but it uh, didn't make any better for him, whether it's his fault or not. It's, uh... So, it's seven laps to go. And Nick, Cass Nick Cast is set a uh, fastest uh, sector time of uh, 31.7. Yep. He has closed the gap, Chris. And he's closed the gap down to 0.8 of yep, a second, under a now, second so. now. So, yep. Well, he's got eight laps to go. Well, so now's the time to pedal to the metal, I think. Yep, he's been here before. Not this year. Haven't won a race this year yet. As we said, best of third place, but last year won one race. On his way to the vice championship. 
with a bit of a messy passer, but uh, Honda managing eventually to get out of the way of a GT500 car. It had a, it had a big wobble on the Mercedes then. And Nissan. Yeah, so this is the battle for the final podium place, Chris. We just mentioned three Nissans at the moment in podium positions, but this is uh, Nari Gamu on the Leon Racing Mercedes. And that car has closed right up onto the tail of the number 11 Gainer Nissan. Can he do anything about it in these closing laps? So we've got, uh, yeah, we've got a, a battle for the overall lead and we've got yeah. a battle for uh, third in, in GT300. Yeah, this Mercedes hasn't had a podium this year yet. It's had a sixth, a fifth, and then last time out at Suzuka a 14th. But a third place today for the Leon Pyramid Mercedes team would be very, very good for them. That's uh, now Gamu on board the car at the moment. Haruki Kurosawa started it being split at the moment but can he doing about yes, that that's one of the uh, one of the 500 yeah. cars. you know sometimes you could you could hitch a ride on a gt500 car and get get towed past but it didn't happen in that case here we are this, this battle going on then so this is for the final podium position in gt300 and uh, gamu has got to get his skates on because he's only got six or five and a half laps now to go so So Cap Nick Cassidy is 0.7 of a second behind the uh, leading Lexus of Yamashita. Yeah, but as we've seen, Yamashita can, can play as he wants, can't he? You see Cassidy can just put that little bit extra on, and uh, I think we're pretty much locked into those three GT500 positions, but prove me wrong. <laughs> I was just about to say, commentator's curse, Mark. <laughs> we don't do those. <laughs> So just to remind you, last time here, this time last year, it was Lexus who won the main race, 500, and it was Nissan who took GT300. As uh, we the see the Aston, he's got, got a tag on, yes. Yeah. Rear right, he's just getting out of, off the racing line. And the good thing about this circuit, you've got a lot of hard standing. Uh, the fairly major puncher, isn't it? Or yes. any puncher's major, but uh, he's going to drive so, so carefully. There's so much you can damage on these cars particularly the Aston Martins with their uh, their Venturi tunnels in the rear. So just keep it cool. But he's, he's being slow. very sensible. Yeah. Uh, how many times have we seen people trying to go too quickly? Yeah. Trouble is, Chris, he's not in the anywhere in the running. I mean, he's a, a long way down anyway in uh, yeah. GT300, and he's dropping even further down now. He's just gone down to 20. He'll get it back to the pits, hopefully no points for them today. Right, what's Cassidy doing? The gap's opened up again. 1.5, he, he's lost. What did he lose on that yeah. lap? Lost 0.8 of a second on that lap. Yes, Yamashita, as you said, Mark, seems to have yeah. things under and control. And again, Nick maybe may have got caught in traffic. There he is, just going around uh, turn three at yes. the moment. Making sure he doesn't get tangled with anyone. That's not obviously not Nick, is it? No, that's that's the Hoppy's car. Hoppy, who started from pole position, where, where are they at the moment? They really haven't uh, haven't shone at all today. Five laps to go. This 300 kilometer race here at Buriram Circuit in Thailand. As we see the Aston, yeah, Aston uh, just makes it. Good job. Yes, Nick Castis still yeah. 1.2 seconds behind. So as we see them now on the screen. Yeah, so Tomonobubu Fuji gets that uh, D-Station Aston Martin back into the pits. Great race for them earlier on. They, in the first half of the race, they were right up in the lead battle. Here's the race for third place. Final podium place still going on then between Nissan and Mercedes. Second of the Gainer Sports Nissans. With the Leon Pyramid Mercedes GT3. Exactly the same car you see in the Blanc Panzer is exactly the same cars you're going to be seeing at the Spa 24 hours at the end of July. GT3 
GT racing's biggest challenge, and there are a number of Japanese drivers making the trip there, as they did to the Nürburgring 24 hours. Last weekend? Yep. Last weekend, yes. Yeah, it's, it's that time of year we have the three major 24-hour races, all within a six-week period, Le Mans, Nürburgring, and, and Spa. Bring it on. Yeah. So there we are. Condo Technical College entered car. Going to give the students the thrill of a lifetime if they can pull that off. Well, that is in the realised car there. Yes, and uh, Kenta Yamashita yeah, that, that. Uh, pulling out now. He's got 1.6 seconds over Nick Cassidy, although certainly didn't look that way on the screen but uh, and the Leon racing Mercedes 0.7 uh, behind the Nissan suddenly just three laps to go that's gone so quickly hasn't it yeah, so that's kind of stress yeah they, uh, again a, a a name and, and a person we don't really know. We'll look forward to him coming here to Europe eventually. Looking very, very uh, concerned about everything that's going on. Yes, we're not seeing the overall leaders, but. Uh, uh, Kenta Yamashita is uh, pulling out now on Nick Hasty. He's got a 1.9 yep. second lead, so gradually easing away with three laps to go. Yeah, I think I think Nick Cassid has decided discretion is the better part of valor. Going to settle for second. Certainly, right, taking him more risks. I guess the team will have told him to calm down a bit. Okay, two laps to go then. But the leader this getting very held yeah, up, very, very uh, going into the yeah. first corner. Yeah, uh, that will uh, eventually works his way past. So this is the penultimate lap with Nick Cassidy. Yeah, just flashing his lights at that uh, 300 car. Yeah, that has given him the chance to close, isn't it? Maybe that, Cassidy yeah. is going to wake up now and think, "Oh, well, I might have a go." No. I can see him more flashing. So Nick goes past those two back markers. Yamashita die. already already indicating to the car in yeah. front, quite a long way in front, that he's coming up behind him. Oh, that's super tough. Turn four into five and six. Takes him around the lake and then back up into the technical part of the circuit. This is the part the drivers say really, really flows and they, they, they love it. Oh, that's a wide line. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Track limits. Yeah, we were talking about that, weren't we? So there is Hoshino in the second of the gainer cars, the number 10 car, third one rather, still under pressure from the Mercedes. So we're on to the final lap now. Yeah. Well, I think certainly in GT300, the Nissans have done all they can. They're one, two, three at the moment. And uh, let's wait to see if that Mercedes of uh, Marugamu can do anything about that final podium position. Spoil Nissan's party. But up front, Yamashita, 1.2 seconds. So he lost a little bit to Nick Cassidy, but there's no way Nick's going to make that up on this final lap. I think, Chris, whatever happens, it's going to be a Lexus 1-2-3 and GT500. And a, a Nissan 1-2 and possibly 3, possibly three in, in GT300. Wow, that's a big bunch of cars there for the final lap. But they're not backing off. No, far from it. Oh, three into one won't go. <laughs> oh. Someone has to go off. We've pushed off a second. Well, that's the... Uh, Oh, this is the change of lead then for GT300, Chris. The uh, condo car has been pushed back into second on the last lap. That was a 
dive bomb by Ishikawa and he's pushed Hiramini in the technical college car back into second place. Oh dear. Still, it's going to still be in the same one, two, three, but maybe not the one that Kondo certainly wanted. As Here we, we are, see. final lap, check a flag. And the win goes to Kenta Yamashita. What a great victory there for him. He and uh, Kazuyu Oshima doing such a good job. The Wacko's Lexus there. Nick Cassidy comes home second. Sho Tsuboi third. Kondo Mitsuboshi Kabitabayoshi in fourth. And the best of the rest is another Lexus, which has just gone past the Honda. The 39 car of Nakayama, the Saad Lexus. So Lexus again absolutely dominant here in Thailand. And as they cross the line in GT300, Mercedes. Has he done it? He's done He's it. Done it. Done it. Yeah, so we've had we haven't seen that, but maybe they we're just waiting for them to come through now. But there's a change of order anyway between the Nissans on the the first and second place. And Gamu somewhere has managed to go through. In fact, the other Nissan has disappeared. Where is the other gainer car? It was in third, it's dropped down to tenth place, Chris. So he's must, obviously must have had an off had an off. Maybe that's the car we saw being pushed sideways. Uh, a lap ago so that went very very wrong for nissan right at the end it's a lexus top five overall but it's a uh, nissan nissan and then mercedes podium in gt300 and there we see our leader making his way around uh, his uh, victory lap yep well i must say mark they're beautiful looking cars yeah. aren't they Really lovely looking cars. Yeah, of course, unfamiliar to us in uh, in Europe, the, the colours, the sponsorships, and the Japanese do love that. They, they, they cram as many sponsors as they can on. So. And this does get massive television. You know, this is shown live on three separate Japanese channels, not to mention gl globally here on Motorsport TV. And the reliability factor, very high. Yeah. Very, very good. Uh, Okay, the, I think the only uh, retirements were due to uh, uh, accidents. So this should bump this car up into the championship lead according to the uh, projected rankings. Was down in sixth place. Going to come away from here with 20 points. So Kenta Yamashita climbs out the car be welcomed by uh, Kazuya Oshima. Kento is 23 years old. Here's the number 10 car. Keishi Ishikawa bringing in the GT300 winner. Yeah, there is uh, Oshima-san. And Oshima did such a good job early in the race, didn't he? It was a fantastic battle early on. He gave as, Yamashita as a Nick car. As he comes yep. over to uh, congratulate him. Yeah. And, uh, well, Yamashita won't have seen what was going on behind him with uh, Sekiguchi and Cassidy. So <laughs> but no, good job by all these guys. But certainly Oshima and Yamashita, it's their day, their first win of the season after a third place at Suzuka. But they're going to pay for that, Chris. Yes, because they get aut automatic weight yep. uh, penalties. They are going to pay for that. Now, let's see what talking of penalties, 53 kilos we had, didn't we, on the... Uh, what was the championship leading car the number 38 car where did they finish with that huge huge weight well look at this they're uh, 38, 38 seven. seven so seven. they they did well to, yeah, they to drag that car up 53 so kilos and a fuel penalty but then uh, then this car the the uh, the number six car will be hit uh, yeah, for the next race. And likewise, this number 10 car, the Gainer car, there is Ishikawa San just waiting for his teammate to come and give him the hug of death. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, Do you uh, think they might be pleased? Kazushi, Kazuki Hoshino. Hoshino there in the yellow boots. Now, would you believe, 41 years old. <laughs> his father in his 70s. Of course, the architect of Nissan's Le Mans challenges, wins in the Japanese championship, always known as the fastest man in Japan. And the only uh, time Nissan ever won a world 
sports car championship race in the Group C days. Yes. At Fuji, 1985. The, and he the was year one of the, of the drivers. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's the only driver because they never actually, none of the Japanese who continued racing after all the Europeans had been drawn, none of the other Japanese teams changed drivers because yeah. the race was short changed. There we are. Let's just wait for the results to come up. Well, it's been a good afternoon. It's been relatively incident free, safe racing. We do feel very, very sorry for Jensen Button, who really was looking forward to having a great race here today, but it wasn't to be. The relief on their yeah. faces that, uh, that they've taken that win. Yeah. Just waiting for someone to come and collect them. Here we go. We're just waiting for the uh, Japanese interviewer. We not going to be able to bring you these interviews because we don't have our Japanese translator here in the cabin. But Ashima is obviously telling everyone what a wonderful race they had. I, To my mind, he was the star driver today, Chris. In that first stint, he did such a good job, didn't he? And then handed that number six car over to uh, Yamashita. Yeah, they in, were very consistent. Yeah. Yep, yep. And drove a very, very clean race. Yep. So Yamashita obviously uh, acknowledging that he too did a great job here today. Yes, and Yamashita, you know, uh, in 2007, yep. he was in the Japanese Formula 3 is the Championship. This is Kazuya Oshina, who runs uh, Wako. No, in fact, that's Juchi Wakisaka, who runs the Wako's team director. Wakisaka himself, a, a long-time GT500 runner, now taken over a management role with the team. So good job by his two drivers, and they'll be absolutely delighted with that. It's an another feather in the Lexus cap, but particularly in the Wacko's team cap. And uh, <laughs> there we go. Photo opportunity. It'll be uh, fascinating to see these cars when they come to Europe, Mark, and race yep. against the, the, the invitation yeah, race at the end of the year. Yeah, end of, end of October at Hockenheim, and then Germans, German DTM cars will go over to Fuji for an exhibition race at the end of the year so yes it would be be really good yep. to see some of these cars racing in the DTM and, it, and it's a hugely fan friendly formula that's you know they really involve spectators at every step of the way as we see our GT300 winners Keishi Ishikawa and Kazuki Hoshino being interviewed for Japanese television. Sorry, we can't bring you the interviews, but uh, my Japanese finishes at a hug. Ohayo gozaimasu, konbanwa, and konnichiwa. <laughs> <laughs> Mine doesn't even go that yep. far, Mark. So Hoshino, who incidentally is a partner in his father's Impul racing team, so he's uh, he'd be get back to work when, when they arrive back in Japan, preparing for the next race, and that next race, Chris, is coming up at Fuji and is yes on the um, third the 4th of August yeah 4th of August so they, they take a break during July it's too hot in Japan for any mm. racing normally and uh, so we wait till August as we get through the three hottest races here at Fuji and then the, the next one at Autopolis which uh, comes early in September yeah, on the 8th of September yep followed by Sugo on the 22nd of September and the the final round at Montegi Montegi yeah uh, on the 3rd of November yep which is quite late and as we know from experience you know October November a lot of rain in Japan in so Japan <laughs> yes <laughs> oh look at this tears <laughs> Hashino-san actually overcome uh, by that He's absolutely delighted to have won we don't often see that do we from the Japanese but that's uh, Good to see. They are human. So these drivers. There we have the provisional res re results: the Wackos, uh, Lexus, the yep. Kirby, Keeper, Le Lexus, and the Wed Sport Advan Lexus. Yeah, and that is all Lexus down to that uh, sixth place, number three, Craftsport Nissan, of course. And then you've got the 38 car behind them, the the Zent car. 
which is Lexus again. So it really, really has been a, a Lexus stroke Toyota wipeout. I think the other man, one might have to feel a bit sorry for him, is Nakajima, who said he'd love to have pulled off the double Le Mans and then his next race winning here in Thailand, but it wasn't to be today. Yeah, that, that uh, overtaking by Nick Cassidy uh, put paid to that. Yeah. And there's the 300, yep, GT so 300 results. Again, it's a double for Nissan, but a great move by Mercedes right at the end of the race in that number 65 Leon Pyramid car. And uh, happened after sight of us, but uh, Nayo Gamu and Haruki Kurosawa getting that car onto the podium. And then and our whole position, man, yeah. Your hoppy they Toyota came, 86. Well, they came oh. back from the dead, didn't they? They dropped down to 10th at one point. So yeah. the hoppy Toyota actually getting back up there. Hope we might see the championship point. There's a lot to work out at the moment. Um, we've got a lot, also got a lot of GT 300s to get through before them. And such a pity to see the uh, Aston Martin Vantage down in uh, 19th yeah. place. I mean, but then they had those tire problems at the end. Yeah, I mean, uh, does that ring a bell, Mark? Yeah, tire yeah, problems yeah, and yeah, Aston yeah, Martins? Yeah, yeah. Yes. It would have been great. Just, we got Mercedes on the podium anyway. That's something, but it would have been great. Here we are. Here's the points then. So it is Oshima and Yamashita. 35 points now, but they're going to pay the penalty for that. And they're only one point ahead of Acidy. But uh, really terrible, terrible season for Jensen Button. They're not even in the top 10 here today in that car. 300, Nita and Sakaguchi, they came here, I think as leaders, just checking that. Yes, they did, and that's the K-Tunes car. So they stay in the lead, but uh, Takaki Fukuzumi stay in second place. So just waiting for the podiums here, Chris, at Buriram. Well, the weather's been kind to everybody. It's super hot, but the rain has kept off. And so, uh, so let's just have a look at some of the of replay. Stuff. Yep. So this is the Jensen... Was this the Jensen Button moment, or was this the no? This is something else. This is uh, this is Cassidy and uh, no. This is the this is right at the big. Oh, there right, we go. Oh, that's a spin. I Just behind the leaders at yep. that time. Ah, oh, no, that that was the second of the gainer cars. That's why they lost third place. They've just found that, haven't they? They yes. lost third place in GT300 to the Mercedes. That's obviously the moment that happened. That was a gay, Gainer Nissan. So thank you, Mr. Director, for finding that. They've obviously been going, going through Searching the tapes. Searching the cameras. <laughs> yeah. So here we are here. All the Japanese fans are absolutely delighted to see Lexus winning. Lexus, Toyota, it's all the same family. So just waiting uh, as uh, the uh, guys there well, is Fenestraz. Uh, because we really wanted that victory. Uh, but yeah, next time we we'll see what we do Jamaica. Yeah. Just trying to pick up some of the English interviews there going on by the Super GT media service. Waiting for the podium. Yep. Being entertained by the crowd. So, as we say, a, a technical circuit, a circuit the drivers love, but a good, fast, safe race today. But sadly, it looks like we won't be coming back here in the foreseeable future. Sai Sipang, the circuit I went to when it opened in 1999 for the first time ever, then Super GT came there the following year, 2000. It was there for 14 years until it handed over to Buriram. Now it's going back, certainly for one race at least, for this night race. Yes, but it, it's a very similar circuit, Mark. Yep. Um, slightly more uh, different changes, but uh, very similar circuit. Yeah, it's got that same long back stretch with the hairpin. That, uh, yes. Here it's early in the lap at Sipang, of course, it's the end of the lap where they, uh, they come from behind the grandstands around a hairpin and then back up the pit straight in front of the grandstands. and. Uh, some very untidy parking here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think you forgive them that. Yeah, don't know. Don't they know what the green stuff is? <laughs> well, we're just waiting the podium, so stay with us or leave us as you wish. Thank you very much for being with us on Motorsport TV, Mark Cole and Chris Parsons. <laughs> yes. And uh, nice way to start a, a Sunday morning. Yep.
Plenty of action, of course, on Motorsport TV today. We'll be bringing you CIV, the Italian Superbikes, Moto3, Pre-Moto3, and Supersport 600. Chris McCarthy will be here hosting that for you on Motorsport TV. And that will kick off about 1.30 UK time. So if two wheels is your bag, the same as four wheels, make sure you catch it. Yesterday's races from Imola were absolutely thrilling and it gets no better. In fact, in one race yesterday, Chris, the pre-moto, th uh, the Moto3, we had the first, second and third on the final lap all crashed out oh. in the final cor <laughs> two corners. <laughs> all self-inflicted. <laughs> Racing well, doesn't get well, better than obviously that. Obviously, the excitement got the better of them. Yep. So just waiting for the uh, podium celebrations. And then we'll be able to leave you until uh, CIV later on. In about two and a half hours from now. So championship opens up again then. The Japanese organizers very, very clever at getting this right. They get the balance is so right that you never get more than two or three points between the... Uh, top three or four in the championship. I think this shows that, that, that the, their balance of performance of, of automatic uh, weight penalties when, uh, you know, when you get points, it, it does work. It, it works very well. Um, but the balance of performance or the equivalence of technology, Mark, uh, it's always contentious. Yep. Always contentious. But that's, that's the, the modern face of motorsport. <laughs> well, they're dragging us out a bit. I do apologize. Uh, I'm sure you've got other things you want to do. <laughs> Just waiting then for the winners here at Chang International Circuit. Well, we were very lucky to get a dry race today, yep. Mark. Very yeah, lucky. Forecast, <laughs> forecast is very much against that. I know for the last couple of days you've been saying, well, we'll get, we're going to have a wet one. But, uh, <laughs> we yeah. managed to avoid that. But of course, Europe also sweltering in a heat wave, 45 degrees in France a couple of days ago, and uh, Germany, 40s as well. Well, we've got the crowd, we've got the podium, we're, we're the drivers. Yes. And I'm sure they're all rehydrating themselves after, <laughs> after their exertions. ครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผมครับผ
และในลงจับต่อไปครับจะเป็นการมอบรางวัลออโต้แบกนะครับให้กับอันดับที่1ครับนั่นคือรถหมายเลข10นะครับผมไกเนอร์ทานักชูเบอร์เอทีทีอาร์ครับขอเรียนเชิญมิสเตอร์ซูเฮฟุกดะเมนเนจิ่งดีเรคเตอร์บริษัทสยามออโต้แบกจำกัดครับให้เกียรติมอบรางวัลครับขอเรียนเชิญครับ So managing director of Auto Backs, one of the champ championship sponsors, hands over the uh, top prize for GT300. Auto Backs is sort of the Japanese Halfords, <laughs> putting their money very much where their mouth is. Here comes the important one, Chris. This will be the check. <laughs> yes. Lots and lots of yen. Four-thousand yen, apparently. Yes. Waiting for the GT500 presentation now. และขอขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ฮิโรชิมิฮาระทีมเลเดอร์ทีม2โปรดักชันดิวิชันเจสปอร์ตคอร์ปอเรชันครับ clearing the podium champagne time <laughs> started by Dan Gurney 1967 at Le Mans champagne time the late and great Dan Gurney Whose whose son uh, is uh, is playing his father in a, a film that's oh, yeah. uh, going to be coming out soon. Ford versus Ferrari, yes, yeah. Com coming out at the end of the year. MGM and Alex Gurney, yeah, he's he's on that. There's two Hollywood hard hitters, Matt Damon and uh, Christian Bale, playing Carroll Shelby and Ken Miles. That's going to be a great film, isn't it? Can't wait for that one. Yeah, it'll, it'll be terrific stuff. Well, I wrote a book about that uh, very subject last year, and uh, the Hollywood producers have actually been in touch asking if the, for a time, which is uh, a great honour. So yes. we shall see what happens. Uh, photo opportunity then, GT300. The Thai uh, organisers obviously making the most out of this. It's the last time they'll see Super GT for the foreseeable future. GT500 coming up then. It, it's a bit of a misnomer, isn't it, Mark? You say GT300 and GT500. <laughs> this is where the, the championship started off with with 300 brake horsepower and yep. 500 brake horsepower. Yep, exactly. And that's now gone to 500 yep. and 650. The name's so stuck. I wonder what they'll do next year because DTM and uh, Super GT will become Class A next year. That's probably just... The generic title for FI, I, I guess they'd keep the names, wouldn't they? Yes. But it's 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 great that the organisers of both series have brought them into line. Yeah. Which which means that there's far more cars available uh, <laughs> for people to race. Yeah. So the Lexus Bear just doing his bit as we wait for our race winners to be called up. Kenta Yamashita. Kathy Osha, Oshima, Nick Cassidy, and Ryo Hirakawa, and then Sho Tsuboi, and Yuji Kunimoto.
และในช่วงต่อไปครับเรามาพบกับโชว์หน้าของทั้ง3โพเดียมครับในคลาส GT 500เริ่มต้นที่โพเดียมอันดับที่1ครับรถหมายเลข6ครับวาโก้โฟร์ซีอาร์เอลซีไฟฮันเรดนักแข่ง2คนครับคาซุยะโอชิมะและเคนตะยามาชิตะสกาซิโอโอชิมะเคนตะยามาชิตะ called up first our race winners for the Lexus team the Mon Waco squad หมายเลข37 Keeper Tom L C 500นะครับนักแข่ง2 first time winners this year และอันดับที่3ครับรถหมายเลข19 Nick Cassidy then there Interesting to see Chris whether or not the uh, stewards will be having a word with him or not, or is it fair racing? Rio Hirakawa with him, and then finally Su Suboshi and Yuji Kunimoto completing the Lexus podium. Honda, meanwhile, somewhere in the garage, licking their wounds. Yes, poor Jensen Button. I think he got two laps out of his weekend. <laughs> not very good. Well, with that, Chris, we finish our coverage here from uh, from Thailand, from the Buriram circuit. Been a good afternoon of racing. Plenty more to come on Motorsport TV, and don't forget later on UK time, just after one o'clock, CIV Italian Superbikes from the magical circuit of Imola. So until next time, from me, Mark Cole, and from me, Christopher Parsons, goodbye. 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 Mr. Suhe Fukuda, Managing Director of the Siam Autobag Chamkat, to give you a chance to get the money. To the next car, 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 the next car. และขอเรียนเชิญทุกท่านถ่ายภาพร่วมกันนะครับโฟโต้เซสชั่นขอขอบคุณทุกคนทุกโพสต์คุณทินทุกผู้อำนวยการสำนักประสานงานภายนอกบริษัทไทยแบบเบรดจำกัดมหาชนครับให้เกียรติมอบรางวัลนะครับและขอขอบคุณมิสเตอร์ซูเฮฟูกุดะเมนเจอร์ดีเรคเตอร์บริษัทสยามออโต้แบกจำกัดครับขอแสดงความยินดีและขอเสียงปรบมือครับผมช่วงนี้ชมเปชอเราได้เห็นโฉมหน้าของหลอบรรดานักแข่งที่คว้าโพเดียมอันดับ1 2และ3ในคลาส GT 300และ GT 500เป็นที่เรียบร้อยแล้วนะครับต้องขอขอบพระคุณพี่พี่สื่อมวลชนทุกทุกท่านครับขอบคุณคุณผู้ชมที่มาร่วมเป็นส่วนหนึ่งในการแข่งขันครั้งนี้นะครับสำหรับวันนี้ในช่วงของกิจกรรมนะบริเวณแทร็กช้างอินเตอร์เนชั่นแนลเซอร์กิตตอนนี้หมดเวลาเป็นที่เรียบร้อยนะครับ